That's fucking a nightmare on that screen over there. Oh, that's a good thing to start with, James. Hello. We're live. I mean, I'm referring to stop. <laughs> Welcome to what is currently being called the Rookie Report, because I didn't think of a proper name. As you the can see, we have okay. the new Universal Champion, uh, Stob in a Mask. Yes. That is no, who he is. Stob in a Mask. This is our introductions. I am Chris. I'm going to be your host tonight. And in the middle we have... The Old Man. Yep. Old That's man my rest's name. I'm just, just known as Old Man. So we have I Old Man James, out. a big gay stob, and little boy Chris. Yeah, I like and it. I'm, I was just holding the belt just for the start. This, this is heavy. I'm putting this down. Yeah, I'm going to take the mask off. I can't breathe. Oh no, he's revealed his persona. He can never rest in Mexico again. This podcast <laughs> brought to you by Budios. Not at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, nice. not at all. So, tonight we're going to talk about NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 and WWE SummerSlam. Yeah. Uh, you get, you guys got anything to say? About. Or are we done? Um... Wow, yeah. what a weekend for wrestling. Right, so, yeah, uh, great weekend. Let's jump into Saturday night with NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. Am I right in saying it was a pretty awesome show? Yes. I think, uh, I think the NXT... I don't watch NXT day-to-day, -day, but it's a much better product, right? Like, can we yeah. all agree on that, at least? Yeah. NXT like, is like a catch-up thing for me. Like, I'll watch, like, two or three weeks in a row. I won't watch it every week. Yeah. yeah. I don't watch NXT weekly anymore. I watch it like every couple of weeks, just so I can sort of binge on a couple of episodes at a time. Yeah, it's, it's fun. So, very first match of the night, we're going to jump into the tag NXT Tag Team Championships. We have the Undisputed Era defending against Mustache Mountain. Some good old British strong style in there, representing the UK. This yeah. is the, the first. Do you, do you time want to know my first match? my first notice for this, Chris? Because I did yeah. take notes because I'm a I'm a dedicated student of the game. <laughs> I didn't take notes. Uh, right my too. first note is uh, Trent Seven. That, like, I'm going to say this now. I'm a look right. Okay, I have got all this here. Okay, I get it. I'm not a picture of health. Trent Seven, podgy. That's all I'm going to say. When he came out of that stage, I was like, man, that guy is. Like really podgy, <laughs> like, uh, which is probably mean because I'm sure he's a million times fitter than me because everybody mm. is. Have you seen like, the stuff he does? Yeah, uh, to be fair, Trent, I don't think Trent Seven's much fitter than most people, given the fact that he smokes like twenty a day. Oh, um, yeah, that, but yeah. It's, well, the, the podginess does come does come in use, like that tag team move with Tyler Bate, where basically like, Tyler gives him like a foot up and he does uh, like a landing set on him. Yeah, that is yeah. an awesome move. But... The thing is, though, I was expecting that to be a flip. I was cause I'm so used to it yeah. being a flip. So he went up, and I was like, "Oh my god, they're gonna flip him!" And then he just went, and, just... and I was like, "Oh, okay." That's, that's great, that's though. What it's that great. is. Like, ah. But it so... does work. I mean, with the benefit of watching it again, because I watched it, I had to watch it again for the notes. Like the second time I watched it, I was like, "Oh, I get it now." Like you know. Well, this is basically the third time we've seen this match now. First was at the Royal Albert Hall, where Mustache Mountain won the tag team championships. Then it was a week or two ago on NXT we've seen this match where Undisputed Era took it back. And this was the rubber match and it was a great match of course with Undisputed Era leaving with the titles. Probably a finish to the feud. Unless I think what they could do is Mustache Mountain again but bring in um, Pete Dunn. Yes, Peter Dunn. Uh, Pete Dunn and, and have uh, Adam Cole for a uh, six man tag match. I, I, I think to be honest I think they're done with it because because of what happened after the match with uh, is it War Machine? I always get their name wrong. Oh yeah, War, yeah. Machine. War Machine. War, War Raiders. Yeah, sorry, yeah, War, War Raiders. Raiders that's it. War Raiders. Yeah, I always called War Machine. Um, yeah, but like, I think because of the way they came out and just did their bit at the end, I'm like, okay, so the Mustache Mountain thing is done. And I think a little bit of that is I wouldn't be surprised to see Mustache Mountain come back to the UK for a while because they're about to do the NXT UK. Yeah, tipping this uh, weekend. The big launch for that, and I can see them coming back just to do stuff on that. So that, you know, in which case they probably won't be on American TV for a while. So yeah. that makes sense to me. But, Speaking you know, of the UK while... stuff, they just announced that the first ever WWE UK Women's Champion will be crowned this weekend yes. in Birmingham. Is that the gaming thing? No, I think it's the tapings. Game. Yeah, they're doing the tapings at the gaming convention. Oh, thing. I didn't know that. Yeah, Insomnia. Yeah. Oh, I had no yeah. idea it was anything to do with that. Yeah, they're doing. Well, I don't know about whether what the. The matches are, but I know they're doing live matches out in Somnia, yeah. Oh, that'll be interesting. Well, 
I'm really excited to see what happens with the UK show, especially because, you know, Belfast own Tucker will be on it. Yeah. You know, I'm proud for that one know. Belfast person on the show. And we've got so Killian can, I, uh, can I make one note as well on this tag yeah. match, by the way? I really like the submission counter with the power bomb. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah. Where it was, so they had, uh, Roderick Strong had, uh, I believe Trent Seven in the, I can't remember what he calls it, Strong Lock, is it? Where he's basically Strong Walls of Jericho. Stronghold, that's ah. it. Uh, and it's basically Walls of Jericho, let's be fair. Um, <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then uh, oh, shit me, I can't remember the names. Tyler Bate was coming across to try and sort of break it up. And then he got caught by Kyle Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly, yeah. Yes, yeah. And then uh, he obviously got locked in with the... I never know what that's called, but I always got a triangle choke, but I can never remember what that's the right terminology for that move. And then uh, he picked him up and powerbombed him through (laughs) through Roderick Strong. Oh, yeah, that's the way they broke up the other submission. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a really cool way to break up the submission. Like, and I just wrote at the end in big capital letters, what an opening match, because I was like, that really set... Like NXT, their opening matches are always yeah. really good. Like, like the they just European set the title time match. for the night. Or sorry, the so, North American title match last uh, takeover. I think the one thing I took away from that is that they need to sort of push Tyler Bate to the moon. Yeah. Like that guy, yeah. he he's tiny, but he like... He's 21 years yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah, he's really young, right? He's the same yeah. age as me, and look what I'm doing. Compared to him. I will say... Kyle O'Reilly, when he came in with the Undisputed Area, that literally was like a year ago now, last year at Brooklyn, didn't really care about him. You know, he was on NXT, nothing interesting, but see these past few takeovers, he has just been amazing. He's so good in the ring. Like, he's, I think he's one of them people, I like, think he is so underrated. Yeah. Because obviously you've got Adam Cole, who's like the like figurehead of Undisputed Area. Then you've got like um, Roderick Strong, who sort of had a little bit of single success like on his own. Then you've got Kyle O'Reilly, who no one really knows much about, but every time he's in the ring, he just does absolute yeah. magic. The and match then Bobby, was... Bobby Fish, who's like disappeared because he's been injured for yeah. so long. But the match where yeah. you know, Bobby Fish wasn't in it, and he teamed with Adam Cole in that tight team match, where Roderick Strong, mm-hmm. Strong turned, that's the match where it's just like, this guy's awesome. Because he basically went the entire match on his own after Adam Cole was put through the table. They're nice. just, all, all four of those guys are just really good, and they've got that heel personality down. Yeah. Just really well for me. Like they, they play the cocky heels well, and I I like it because like I mean Adam Cole's like the most over of a lot of them. But when he does, he's like Adam Cole, baby, baby. and the crowd baby. and the crowd all go with him, which is really kind of yeah. theoretically a big face thing if they shout with him. Or but like he always boom. ends it with just like a super smug look on his face, yeah. and I'm like, what a fucking ass. As if he's saying like <laughs> I have these people in the palm of my hands. Yeah, <laughs> and it just works thing? for me. I think one of my favorite things with uh, Kyle O'Reilly is the whole playing the um, playing the title belt yeah. like a guitar. That's like, great. That that, yeah. for, that for me is just so so like so funny. They're so smug and they're so arrogant and they're so over like loving themselves, but it's great because it works for the character so much. And they like... probably are one of the best tag teams in the WWE today. Yeah, I think them, Mustache Mountain, and probably to some extent. Um, War Raiders, War Machine. I, I think really like, haven't seen much of them. So outside of WWE, I've seen them a little bit, um, and they're both they're quite big guys, but they're the kind of big guys where they can move like people who aren't big guys. They yeah. remind me a lot of. Um, uh, well, actually, they remind me of two things. One is less good, which is the the really short lived main roster tag team of the Ascension. Highlanders. Oh no. Um, <laughs> That's big I mean, there is there is a limited there is a limited link to Ascension as well. Actually, yeah. I'll give you that because of the war paint and stuff. Uh, the other thing they just remind me of in terms of just the way they did the beat down at the end of that was like I don't know. I just thought Road Warriors like the Road oh, Warriors just stupid. came and their whole thing was just to literally pummel the crap out of everybody. And I was just like, these guys could just do a like not the same gimmick, but they have a similar feel to them. Like they just like manhandle, and that's the whole. So I feel like. The way they'll move this program forward is like the Undisputed Era will be more of like um, not the underdogs because they're the title holders, but they'll be fighting from kind of underneath because they'll 
the other guys will dominate and they'll just get like cheap wins so to speak like, like it'll be cheating or... yeah cheating roll-ups with the ropes that sort of thing which will work really well because that's how tag to heal to heal people should be they shouldn't be like dominant they yeah. should be sneaky and agreed you know <laughs> I, I, winning. I do Stop love dying oh, no. <laughs> I, I do love how when on the speed of one the match and they're celebrating that you just see like the war Raiders just come up behind them in the camera view. I thought oh, that was, was great. So funny, just like popped up behind them, like, uh, yep. So let's say that that, let's good. let's give it a rating out of you know what? Screw you, Meltzer. We're going for ten. Rating out of ten stars. What would you give it? Oh. Um, nah, eight and a half, nine. I would say it. Yeah, like an eight, 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 eight to eight and a half. Yeah, but it I was good the, enough. That I can't you know even what, think about reason, what to improve. Yeah, the only reason I can't go super super higher than maybe an eight is just, and this, I, I, it just goes back to what I said at the start. Like I like Trent Seven, but he just for me he was just slow across the ring. Mm. Like he did, there was a bit where they were kind of building momentum. He did like a hot tag and he was building momentum, and then he did like three or four clotheslines. And Stob Stob knows what I'm talking about because oh. he's just he's already sighing about it. And he's doing three or four lariats back across to the corners, like corner lariats. And it's just like, I was like, dude, I could run faster than that. He was like, like put some you... fucking effort into it. I, I do was, love yeah, his chops. Was like so... a... Yeah, uh, I, and I'm sure like he's a talented wrestler. Like you can see that in what he does. But like, it's the I guess maybe his conditioning's not quite there for that specific yeah. thread of moves because. I guess because we're also spoiled, like we used the hot tag of like speed, 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 and he just didn't have it, and I was like, oh, it's kind of just slightly underwhelming. So I can't go so, higher than an eight. Yeah, so sure. Luke, Luke warm tag. Hmm. Right, so let's move on to the next match. And of course, the next match was EC3 versus the Velveteen Dream. And Stob, you have a bit of an unpopular opinion here, don't you? Oh, uh, oh, let me hear his unpopular opinion. Oh, I don't like Velveteen <laughs> Dream. You like, bitch, get out. You've not get seen out. the dream. Like, Do you know what? I'm going to go with the opposite the thing. I have an unpopular opinion, which is I don't like EC3. And that's genuinely uh, accurate. I, I like don't both. understand the appeal of EC3 at all. I just don't get it. He's It worked in TNA because he's Dixie, Dixie Carter's cousin. Um, and obviously with her being the, I thought it was the company. I just, I just, I just one of the two don't get it. Do you know what? I would say, and I don't know whether you guys agree, I would say this might be the worst match of all the card to take over. And that's not that's not a knock on it. It was not a bad match, but I just, it was, <sighs> for me, it was slow. I know, like, we, we kind of had, like, a real high-flying attacking start, so maybe that's why, and they had to bring it back a bit. But it was just so slow. I, like, it just, it felt so slow to me and so kind of ponderous. As a match, and well, there was just I'm sorry, it man. looked a bit. Well, it just looked a bit like I specifically can think there's one move where he was getting him up on the shoulders to do whatever his finisher is. I don't know what EC3's finisher is. Uh, um, one percent. Yeah, one percent. That's it. You, you're absolutely right. And it was, um, and he sort of went like you know did the sort of crouch to get him up on the shoulders in the Cena like fu pose. And then there was sort of like, but because Dream was being slow, or they were both being slow, whatever. There was like this sort of felt like it was massive time delay. It probably was only two seconds, but I was just like, "Boy, that took a while to get him up there, and that looked mm. way choreographed." I know, like, there's elements to chore choreography in wrestling, but I was yeah. like, "That just looked like it to me." And it, I just, yeah, I want to bring up someone who have any chemistry. I, yeah, well, that might be it. Mm. Maybe they don't work well together. Yeah, yeah. it's also because they're both heels, basically fighting about who's the better heel. Yeah. Which some people don't Just like. But I want to bring yeah. this up like before the match even started. We have to talk about it. The back of Dream's tights. And it's on the stream uh, right yes. now. So I'm have a look. I've written it down. Call me up, Vince. Yes. That Love was it. amazing. And I, I bet you see, Vince didn't know anything about that. Because he would is, not have approved that. This is why I like Velveteen Dream. I like, I like Velveteen Dream because he... He's that old-fashioned, like, like eighties heel to me, like old school. Like he just, he's vain. Like yeah. there's little subtle bits of it in the match where he was just sort of going, "I can't hear you, I can't hear you" to the crowd, and I was just like, "Oh, hey, fucking asshole!" It wasn't this scream for him. <laughs> Something that I find I just, hilarious about his character I is, um, so he was the winner of Tough Enough, right? Yes. 
Uh, uh, during... He was in it. I don't know if he won it, but he was in it. Oh, yeah. so one of those uh, during one of his feuds before. I forget who it might have been with. I think it might have even been Ricochet or something. I uh, called yeah. him like the the tough enough mm. reality star winner. And because it's a different character, he cut to dream and he goes, "The dream has no memory of this." Yeah, he's like so into yeah. the character. I find it hilarious, and he is a character. That's what he is. He goes on his gimmick. He is very undertrained in the ring. He's gonna be in wrestling for about three years now. There's definitely a lot he can learn, but I think he is good. But his character is what propels him up to that greatness. I feel no, like, I agree with you. I feel like if he leaves, if he gets called up to the main roster, though, realistically, he's not. Not yeah, gonna no, that will not work on the main right. roster. It will not work on the main roster because Vince won't get it. That's, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Either be the fourth member of the New Day, or he'll be the guy that the New Day is split up. It causes the New Day to split up, and he'll probably team with someone like Xavier Woods. Yeah. They both have like similar personalities. They're both pretty funny. It's yeah, a... it's, it is a shame because you're right. It's not a main roster gimmick. Like they, I just can't. I think you're right. Vince wouldn't get it. It's like Adam Rose and Bo Dallas's gimmick. It they they yeah. both worked so well Alistair, in NXT. To some, yeah, so to some extent, Alistair Black. Or, or um, Jose... Jesus oh, No Way Jose. Jose. No Way Jose, yeah. No, see, that's what I'm saying, because he's Jose. never fucking no, on the no, show anymore. Jose. No. But, like, he, he had a lot of momentum in NXT. People really liked him. And they jumped him to the main roster, and he just became Adam Rose version 2. And nobody wanted Adam Rose version 1 on the main yeah. roster. So it just did like he's just I don't I think he just does main event matches now I don't even think he's regularly featured. I will say I got yeah. to see No Way Jose in the NXT house show a few years ago and it was just fun because the whole arena was just dancing to his music, like everyone, even the guy that was missing a leg was dancing no, to it. Even the guy who was missing a leg. Yeah, the guy in front row would only have one leg. I was talking to him about nice. it. It was great. It was a lot of fun. But, uh. Like, one of the most amazing things in that match was the Dream Valley driver to the ring apron. Yeah, that was a good move. And yeah. like, they, did, they did pull the stops out occasionally. It just, yeah, yeah it just didn't, didn't feel the it match. Sort of it, was a, it felt like a pee break match. Did anybody well, figure really out know. how EC3 got colour as well? I did not. I was looking for it, and it must Ooh. have just been maybe like a, like a grab or something. I'll be honest, I actually missed that the first time round. I, yeah. I watched it live, I didn't see him get colour. I watched it again, I was like, that dude's bleeding. Like, um, where the hell did he get a hit to bleed? I can only assume it was like he caught, caught someone like Dream's outfit somewhere. Yeah, he, he posted a picture on Twitter like after the match, and his eye it was just like out here. It was shut. It was. It looked horrible. Yeah, I, yeah, think, I, I, I couldn't I, see I where it was. Do you know when he did the 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 first Dreamer Valley Driver? I think he just caught him. I mean, he was, but I, he, Dream was wearing like a loose chain necklace. Yeah. It might have been when he went up for that or something and just caught him with the chain in in the eye or something. But yeah, I, I noticed that. I was like, wow, that's, you know. We'll, talk, we'll probably talk about colour later because, uh, oh, yeah. specifically on SummerSlam, because like there was a lot of blood <laughs> flowing around this, this yeah. weekend, like comparative to normal WWE. And none of it deliberate because they're not allowed to blade anymore. So. All right, anyway. so. What's your rating out of 10? I'm going to give it a 7.5. Uh, 6. 6 or 7, like maximum. I really enjoyed it. I just feel like uh, Dream could improve a bit. Yeah, it's... I think it, Dream, I think... I think... Just... No, sorry, go on, stop, sorry. If he get, I think Dream's one of them people. I think if he gets like a feud with someone who sort of matches his personality or can go like toe-to-toe with him personality-wise, he'd have a good feud. I think at the minute there's no one who they can sort of put him against mm. without putting him in the main event picture. So I think I would, man. I, people are gonna hate me for saying it. I wouldn't even. I don't. I, at the most, I'd give it a five. It just, mm. it just really sucked the air out of the room for me. Like it was, and that maybe that's being spoiled because we had such a good opener that it just sucked the air out of the room for me because it wasn't at the same pace or something. Oh, I don't really just know. Coming his beard. <laughs> that's his he's velveteen yes. dreaming it it's his personality um, but like but the thing is and I'll say this about uh, velveteen dream which is an interesting I don't know if this is factually accurate I'm basing this on some info I got from, the, from a podcast I listened to but apparently velveteen dream has not wrestled in a match that isn't a takeover for the last like three takeovers like he does no intermediary matches he just does really? takeover matches apparently so 
which is interesting to me if that's true. Now, I, I openly admit I don't know if that's true or not. I've not researched it. But uh, when I thought about it, I was like, man, I don't remember him being in many matches recently. Certainly not between the last takeover and this one. No, um, he definitely has wrestled on normal. But well, I wonder that... if... I mean, he might do some house shows as well, of course. Like, I'm only... I'm, I'm specifically a friend of TV. But I wondered if, like... Because there's like bits and bobs where he could just do his sharpening the moves up, and I wonder if it's because he's not wrestling enough. Like they're not giving him enough time on a show to do another kind match. Side of pay per views, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like, you know, because somebody like, say Ricochet, which we'll get to in a minute, like he was wrestling matches in between whilst doing the feud with Adam Cole. Yeah, you he, know, he had... the, I think a lot of them do rest, still wrestle on the Indies as well outside of NXT as well. Oh. Some that. do, I think. Yeah, they have special. Yeah. If they have dates already committed, I know they yeah. they're quite good at honouring the dates that they've already committed to. I remember, like when AJ Styles joined WWE, they let him finish all his dates and even let him use his new music and all for it. Mm. Nice. So I'm just gonna uh, pull it along because we're already like 20 minutes in. We've only got what three yeah, matches yeah, done. No, so two matches on. So what I would call match of the night, it is the North American title match between Adam Cole and Ricochet. Sorry, correction. Adam Cole, Bay Bay, and Ricochet. <laughs> Amazing uh, match. Yeah, I would agree with you. Potentially match of the night. That that's um, super. It's kick. either that or Champa Gagan. <laughs> but seriously, um, that moonsault into the super kick. Holy shit! Yes. Yes. I I thought he was dead. Oh. I really thought he was he dead. He properly he he caught him with it as well. Like yeah, if you watch on like the replay, right like he the makes. Neck. Proper contact with the neck. You see neck the welt as later well. as well. You see the welt later on when they're yeah. like, look at the welt it's on his neck. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no it's shit. Like, like, yeah, he got caught. And the thing is, though, if he hadn't, he probably had kicked him that hard because if he didn't kick him hard enough, he just would have had to straighten his head. Yeah. He had to kick him is, enough I, that he went back. I wrote down a list of like what I considered like the super amazing moves in that, and it reads like this <clears throat> Springboard Backstabber. Which was when Ricochet springboarded back oh, yeah. in uh, Cole Corman the backstabber. Super kick flip three exclamation marks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then the kick sequence, which was not quite as exciting, but like they just had a sequence of like ten kicks where they just kept kicking each other, and it, I was like, that was pretty cool. And then uh, he did the over the top rope hurricanrana to finish, like oh, yeah. right near the finish, and I was like, man, Rick, like I'd heard. My knowledge of Ricochet bar what I'd seen on NXT already uh, before he joined NXT was that he'd been criticised because he's too flashy and too he, flippy. He's he, yeah, and he goes too fast. Like he didn't let doesn't let stories develop. I don't think he's got that problem in NXT. He seemed to craft a really nice match to me. Like yeah. it was fast paced, but it was it was still tense. So it you, had the right moments in it. You know, you gotta love that springboard superhero landing. Where like he faked yeah. as if he was about to jump on the Adam Cole oh, and so the back yeah. foot and the boom, the one and only. And I st- I love the I, it was on the video package. He didn't do it in the match, but I loved the one where he runs to the runs across the ring, goes over the top rope and lands oh, on the yeah, outside of the ring, the and then just sort of stands dream. there like that. Yeah. And I'm like, that is like how he doesn't blow his fucking knees out. Doing I don't know. That, that would wreck my know. knees. Because like that is just I don't know like. How tall is a ring? Like the top of the ropes are what seven foot, eight foot? I would say like eight or nine foot, yeah. So he's jumping like eight foot through the air, la- doing a flip and landing almost on straight legged. Yeah, on his it's feet. behind to hurt. It's behind to hurt. Yeah. But that was. A- I don't no, even have that good. many points about the match because it was just so constant and so fast. All right, then I just wrote down: Does uh, is this two of the best uh, talents NXT has right yeah. now? Because I think that's a genuine question. Like Adam Cole is super over. Uh, everything he does is really well, really heelish. He's got a really well crafted character. His wrestling is obviously good. Um, and then Ricochet is just nuts. What he seems to be able to do with his body, like for me, I know. feel like um, if Punk never decides to never ever come back. I feel like Adam Cole is the guy just yeah. to like step into that. Like, he is punk. Like, early punk. He's just mm. talk. The thing I love about Cole as well is how much he talks during the match as well. Yeah, he like, does do a lot of talking, doesn't he? Shit talking, Rick. Yeah, because he's like, you're not special. 
You're not special slapping him like, on wow. Yeah. See, I've heard him, somebody compare him to uh, first generation Shawn Michaels. Yeah, that's like a good when Shawn Michaels was the heel, like looking in the mirror and all that sort of thing. Like not yeah. the vanity aspect of it, but the kind of cockiness and the, which I think is also good. And I guess the comparisons there because he's slightly shorter than yeah. a lot of wrestlers, and Shawn Michaels had the same look on him for a while, or for a long time. One of the things like I mentioned earlier about how he knows that he has the crowd just in the palm of his hand. Just any time where he just does the Adam Cole, baby, I just find right. awesome. Like, there's, uh, just before his WWE days, there was a match where he had with the Bullet Club teaming, against, teaming with Kenny Omega. And there's a t- yes. bit where Omega tags, and tags Cole in, Cole comes into the ring, Omega gets ready for the move, but Adam Cole just turns around and goes. And, like, Kenny Omega's <laughs> just, like, staring at him, like, bro, what are you doing? We're in a match here. So he, he sees himself as he's bigger than the match, like his character, his personality yeah. is bigger than what's going on. No, there. he's both brilliant wrestlers, and that yeah. Was, but yeah. do you think it was time for Adam Cole to drop the title? Yes, I feel like they're uh... gonna bring, they may bring Yui up and be like the next Nexus, sort of. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's really the crux of it. If they're gonna, if if their intention is, let's say for the next takeover, uh, I can't remember War Machine. Uh, War Raiders take the titles off of the, you know, the tag titles off area. of the other members. Then I think they'll bring all of them up. Uh, probably because I hope they don't heal. bring them up separately because I think that ruins yeah. the, uh, that gimmick. But uh, if they bring them all up together, like if he drops that title now, that's fine because he's probably bigger than the title. Like that's what I always hear a lot of people say, which a lot, a lot of people don't say it, which they should. Is that if you're super over, you don't really need a title. The title is there to elevate the wrestler, like because it's a prestige thing. He probably doesn't need the title. No, he does not. You know, he's elevated it already by having it. Yeah. Now it's Ricochet's turn with it, and he'll do what he does uh, with it. And I don't think Adam Cole is hurt by not having it. So you do that, and then next takeover, they lose the tag titles. They got to main roster, and then you're sorted, and you haven't got to worry about trying to tie up the loose ends quickly. And or everyone dropping the titles at the same time, which mm. weakens them all. And yeah, so now I think I think it's right. Uh, I mean, if you think about it. He's only how many times he defended it? Like once, twice. Uh, a few. I think he defended against Danny Birch. I think he defended. Uh... Yeah, he did. Do it a bit. I remember that match. He defended yeah. in the UK, I believe. And what about last takeover? Did he defend there? Uh, um, Chicago. Did did he? He won it in New Orleans. Yeah, I'm that. looking up Chicago. I'm checking the matches for it. Um, he didn't defend. No, he didn't defend it. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised about that. Hmm. Well, yeah, uh, he did do many defenses, but you know NXT is a sort of show where it usually is like one defense every few months. But yeah, yeah Ricochet is a good champion. Yeah. I think Adam could have kept it for a bit longer, but if they are planning to do a call up with Yi soon, then it is the right time to drop it. Because if they all drop it at once, then you know what's happening. My wife's arm here, just on the side of the screen. <laughs> If he's not here, who's going to say it? <laughs> Mrs. Um, Squibbs! Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Squibbs. Right, so, rating, I'm going to give that 10 out of 10. That was a great match, and I'm bleeding. Okay. Uh, 100 out of 10. Like, <laughs> definitely could be match of, the, uh, match of the year for NXT, I would say. Oh, I wouldn't say like, NXT, I'd say generally like, for WWE as a whole. Yeah. I'm yeah, really excited to see what Rick's That's easy, though, to. because the rest of the product is... Not wait, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not oh, we'll get to that soon. Bag. It's a mixed bag, but yeah. It is. So, James, what's your so, rating? Uh, I mean, I don't like giving anything 10. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's got to be like a 9 or 9.5 easy. Yeah. Like, and I think you could definitely Sorry. give it a shout of a 10, but I to have a 10-star match, like, so to speak, or a 10-star rated anything, like... I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't even know whether you can ever give that rating out. It would be really tricky. I can see it being one of those matches where, if you're a, if you ever read the Wrestling Observer, uh, it's famous for. I was just looking up for... his uh, ratings, but he hasn't given them yet. As yeah, uh, see, he's famous, of course, for not giving out a five star rating very often. Yeah. I can see that potentially, potentially getting a five star. But it's well, Gargano, Champa, and the European Ladder match, I believe, both had uh, five yeah. stars. And they were yeah. definitely deserving of it. 
So yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's got to be a really high mark either way, like a nine, nine and a half for sure. Maybe even a ten if I'm feeling super Maybe nice on that The tide dillinger. <laughs> a ten. perfect ten. ten. I love tide dillinger. He's awesome. Even though, he, even yeah. though he insulted Belfast at the live event, but again, moving on because we are, <laughs> we. Get, we could talk about these matches a lot longer, but I don't want us to be here for four hours. The oh, NXT yeah. Women's Championship match, Shayna Baszler versus Carrie Sane. For some reason, I have this on my notes as Shayna versus Baszler. Ah. But yeah, uh, I'm, I was quite She's surprised at the outcome of it. Very surprised at the outcome of this match. I didn't think um, they would give it to Carrie yet, I, and I didn't right, think it would be for I, a roll-up. Can I ask a genuine question? I asked Stop this actually last night. Uh, maybe you were gonna, there. Is it going to be anything they... to do for a gimmick? Yeah. Yes. Basically, yes. Yeah. I don't understand. Like, I, they. Uh, hey, there's gimmicks and gimmicks. I get it. I don't understand the pirate gimmick. I just don't get it. She has a gimmick I can't where figure out what the point of it is. Her gimmick doesn't matter to her at all. Thankfully, she's a good wrestler, and that's what matters. But her gimmick is just it's just a bit of fun, really. Did you yeah, see I guess. the thing on Twitter where she, I think, tread seven. Um, posted a picture of Kari Sane with a moustache and like new members and she <laughs> photoshopped like moustache mountain on top of a mountain with a little pirate hat on oh, <laughs> was, was, oh. Oh, she is the pirate princess and winner of the May Young Classic don't forget that see I said uh, these these are my four notes for this match so I put leg submission moves looked good because there was the, the one where she was bending the leg like and it looked really fucking freaky like, yeah I, I know they're not realistic holds necessarily, but they looked like they looked like they hurt, and I think that was kind of the point. Uh, I wrote the gut wrench superplex was well executed uh, mm-hmm. off the top rope because I think it was, especially when you think that like Baszler, who was executing that move, I know Sane has to help as well, but Baszler's like not that long in the wrestling industry. Like, yeah. how many years has she got at this point? Not she was a UFC less than a year, yeah. right? Yeah. So to do that move, like there's a lot of things that can go wrong with that, especially like just like a standard superplex, I guess is easier for me and in my mind. That was a bit trickier, so I think she executed that well. Uh, and then I just wrote, "Don't get Kyrie's gimmick?" Question mark because I just don't. Yeah, we'll just uh, think about then, that. Sorry, go ahead. And then I just wrote down, "I like the finish." Um, yeah, I like. Cool. Yeah, I agree. I was, I was surprised when it was good. Transition. Yeah, um, I just like the transition, how it was the elbow, then the choke, and then she rolled the choke through. Yeah. Um, and we'll, and we'll, we'll talk about this when we... if we Are we talking about pre-show matches, by the way? Yeah. In this podcast? Okay. So we'll talk about it probably more at the pre-show, pre-show Rusev match. But the difference there, uh, just to give a spoiler alert, is that this one, Shayna was struggling. She looked like she was genuinely kind of pinned down. With the Rusev one, there was a, there was a pin, we'll go over it at the time, and it didn't look convincing, so I like that's why I like the finish because I like to think that they're actually getting caught off guard and they're like, oh no, I can't get out, oh, and then they get pinned, you know, counted yeah. out, counted out, or you know. I do love how the quick road. the end was with like she goes in for the pirate elbow, whatever she calls it, instantly blocked by Shayna up into the submission, but then straight away into that pin. It was just so quick. Mm. It's it's rare a roll up actually is unexpected. She's also, is it me? It was Kari saying super short as well. I know she's a woman, but she seemed really Wait, short in that ring I to me. I know she's a woman. Well, like, women are traditionally short as stuff. Well. Yeah. She is uh, one point five meters. That doesn't help. I am taller than her. I don't know what that means. Five foot but one. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I noticed it is because when she went, did a bounce off the ropes, like one run run, run across the she ropes. On her toes. I swear her head was like touching. The, yeah. Like her, like the rope was like there on her neck, and I was like, man, you you look really short. Yeah, Alexa Bliss says that she has to actually want her toes every time she runs the ropes, otherwise she will end up like damaging her neck. Yeah. But that is alright. I mean, the. It was another one where Alexa Bliss is also five one. This match is another one where it brought me down a little bit because I think it just the pace slowed again. But it worked better for this match than the EC three yeah. match for me, just yes. because of the nature of the way they wrestle. You know, or specifically Shayna wrestles like she's a MMA. She's not going to be like high flying. You know, it's going to be a slower kind of submission holds type match. You know. Yeah. So I would say the reason they had her drop the title is uh, rumours are they're planning to do the horsewoman versus horsewoman match at SummerSlam. Yes, I've also heard that. I do not want that. 
Uh, I just no, Chris is like, no, yeah. no, I'm just, just talking to my to my mother, standing there in the middle of the room. Hello, mother. Uh, follow. Yep. Sorry, no, I, I didn't I, hear a word I, you just I, said. Stop was basically saying he doesn't want that, uh, yeah. and I would Especially I would agree with that because, well, I just. I don't want it because the other the other two of the four horsewomen haven't had any screen time. Yeah, but apart the puppy from sitting in the crowd, like the only thing I can think of is like they have all the horse the uh, WWE horsewomen in the ring, and then Ronda and Shayna come out, and like you know they do the shield thing where they get on either side of the ring, and as you know they've got two girls staring at each of them, and then the other two just come in suddenly and just attack them from behind, and I think yeah. I think the MMA horsewomen have to be the heels in this scenario. Yeah, I don't. I kind of with Stob to be honest. I don't really at, the, at this stage of the game. I don't want to see that long term. Oh, it's gonna happen. They're all under contract now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, long term, I get it. Like that's absolutely something that's just entirely logical. I just don't think it's time for it yet. Because yeah. uh, a lot of people are saying they're gonna do it for evolution, right? I don't know if that's what you said. Um, uh Survivor Series. Like, yeah, Survivor Series would be pretty, pretty sensible. Hmm. Yeah, I would. So that match, I will give it say seven, seven and a half. It was a good match. Five. Ooh, stop coming in with a five. I think honestly, so I wait, give them sometimes like a bit higher. Dream over over this. I do. Interesting. Interesting. I uh, see. I'm not really a big fan of Sheena Baszler's style, honestly. It's, no. It works on the main roster because it's like main roster star wrestling, whereas yeah. NXT isn't main roster Well, she, she also wrestling. looks raw, right? Like, you can tell she's not got that experience yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, I'd probably give it a solid six and a half to seven. I think, like, that's fair. Like, I mean, say, I think your point is valid, which is, I think, that say, say blah, 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 saying probably carried the match more in that I think she was probably the general in the ring. Um, and she definitely kind of put her body more on the line to make Shayna look good. If that makes any sense? Oh, yeah, I know what you story, mean. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it it did bring me back down again. So it's not going to be anywhere near the level of the others for sure. Yeah. All right. So moving on to the main event of the night, what I would say most people were looking forward to for this event: Gargano versus Champa free. Four. Black heart four. No, three. It was three. No, four to two each now. Wait, there was uh the first one where he, he won with the Gargano escape. The second one was that not the street fight? Yeah, this uh, was this was the rubber match. They even said it on commentary. Hmm. It was like it, it might you might think just because it was Brooklyn four. Um I'm gonna have a look while you while you but Yeah, it. I was very excited for this match. Like I rushed home from a wedding to watch this. I think I missed the first half of the night. <laughs> Congratulations your wedding, fuck off. <laughs> I'm getting home. Yeah, but I would say the end surprised most people in this match. Yeah. I was expecting uh, Gargano well, to well, get the crowning. The 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 end was a uh, on the fly call there, right? From yeah. what Stop was saying to me the other day. Like, because Gargano's genuinely cracked his knee out. Mm, it could have been. Like, if it was, then that was a very good call by Champa to do that. Um, there was, uh, a, there was a... They showed it in slow motion. It did look really bad, you know, when he went into the actual... Into the, yeah, oh, yeah, into the case. Thing. It did look bad. Like, it, 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 they, like, slowed it down when the moment he hit and his knee was, like, in a different bit of his leg. I mean, like, oh. I will say that whether it's improvised, whether that was an improvised ending in terms of the fact that Gar- Gargano is actually injured or not, uh, I, d- I agree with you, Chris, in that, like, the ending was just, like, just to slip off the stage to land your feet on the floor. Like, brilliant heel manoeuvre. Yeah. Like, just, and uh, what I like about Champa... I'm just re-watching it now. Um, like... <laughs> oh, that really looked like it hurt. I... Yeah, it really did. Especially because like, he uncovered I, his knee first. I genuinely, like, I know, like, you shouldn't love a heel, but I love what, I suppose I don't love him really because he's an asshole, but I love what he's done with his character from a pure mm. storytelling perspective. Like, Champa is, like, it's so, 
he lives the gimmick in such a clever way. Like his social media, he lives the gimmick. Uh, he just, there's no flash because there's no music. Oh, you know, he doesn't yeah. have anything sure, like there's good. no music, there's no nothing. It's just like he comes down the ring and he's like, witness me. And it's like, what a great way to like portray yourself. To and also just, like, to... just perfect. Interesting. Yeah. Champa and Gagano is the. Um... Is the fact that Triple H admitted they were like a couple of weeks away from being released because he had nothing from them yeah. for them basically, and even now turned into mm. like the the NXT guys. And like, did you ever watch the the Cruiser Quick Classic between them? Yes, it was that match was insane. I think the th- the thing is they're just two guys who have a really good connection. So sort of, yeah, and I think they've wrestled that much they know exactly what they're doing in the ring together to sort of make it work and they can do it over and over again which is nice yeah by the way you were right triple h to confirm that gargano has a legitimate injury yeah it was yeah. It, i think it was do you know when he uncovered his knee mm-hmm. i don't think he was meant to uncover his knee i think he just sort of it, it was sort of like a bit more storytelling from them but yeah. then like and it I definitely mean, worked in the story but... everything out there right like that match reminded me of like attitude era level hard like Without the bloodletting, obviously, but like they they did table spots, they did chair spots, they did a crutch spot, they uncovered the ring and did like drops on the wood. They did stage stuff. They threw a guy uh, on top of the Obviously, they did that. They... They, yeah, I was going to say they, they <laughs> threw a member of staff. That, that guy that guy had a bad weekend. <laughs> yeah. We'll get that back to that later. But uh, but no, like. It just it really reminded me of like an attitude era kind of match for like a better terminology. Just like they really just ramped it up to like yeah. thing, and it's all the little it's the little touches, right? Like you're right, like the champa sort of hand thing. That it's things like even at the end, if that was like an improvised end, which we all pretty much agree and we think it is. Um, when when they cut the feed. The last shot of that feed, I don't know if you guys noticed. Yeah, Champa in the background. Uh, was Champa back in the background again with the reps with the refs telling him like uh, go away. And like that's like cause he left and then he came back because that's what a hero would do. He would be like, Oh yeah, he's still injured. I'm just gonna go. Like... Yeah. It was brilliant. To be heel slightly maneuver. more accurate. He knows the wrong belt. Yes, yeah, the old still belt, but we'll go with it. <laughs> But no, like, I just, oh man, it's just so good. Like, I'm not, a, 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 controversially, I don't feel much in the way of feelings for Johnny Gargano as such. Mm. Like, he's talented. I really like his wrestling, uh, but I'm not, like, super invested in his character as such, bar this feud, because obviously I know the history of the feud. But Champa, like, I'm all in on that character, like, as as a brilliant heel. Like, yeah. I feel like he is such a good I also think actually. it's another heel they will ruin if they put up to the main roster. He's one this of the is guys. The problem with NXT, they'll just they can't bring them up because what? There's no way he can do that kind of stuff on the main roster. Yeah, everyone respects the guy. Everyone knows he's a great wrestler and all, but you can't help but hate him, and that's why he's such a good heel. Because mm. even though you know it's a story, you know they're probably still best friends. Every time you see him, every time you see him screw over Gargano, you're just like, fuck this guy. Like the fact mm. that "fuck you, Champa" was chanted so much, and just asshole, was just like well, that I've night. D- I can't turned. remember a WWE, and that kind of goes for NXT as well. Like it's just the whole product in general. I can't remember the last time, recently, let's call it like last ten years, maybe at least, where someone has been universally booed when they're supposed to be booed. I yeah. don't count Roman Reigns. <laughs> but, um, but like, when, when they're supposed to be booed, like, because they're actually a bad guy. And he gets it. Like, he comes out, and there's, like, an initial wave where people are like, yay! Because they just, they're like, oh, it's NXT, it's great. And then immediately, within two seconds, they're like, oh, wait, we hate this guy. <laughs> and you're the... like, that's exactly what you want, is, like, that that response. One know? of the best things ever was at the, was it Chicago, the street fight, yeah? Yeah. So they come out for the street fight, and you know, Champa comes out, no music, everyone's just constantly booing him, like the loudest booze over here. He's up on the ring rope, boo, and then Gargano's music hits. And Gargano was such a, like a, the music such like a sudden hit, really happy, really positive music. Just mm. from the booing to the pop, like instantly, it was just awesome, I think. And like, they do have one of the best feuds of recent memory. 
I feel like there's going to be one more match. Yeah, um, it has to be. Well, I can't think... end like that. Well, there has to be now. There's a knot. I think if they'd left it and oh, I don't know, I suppose they still could have had a blow off. But I think I feel like if Gagano had won, let's assume a second that was what was going to happen, and Gagano was going to win. Hmm. Uh, then I think maybe they could have just left it there. Maybe because I like people. The problem is and this is the only problem with this feud is like it's a super great feud. Like they built it brilliantly. But there's only so many times you're going to be able to go to the world before people just get... As much as they love the characters, people are going to get bored of just seeing the same two guys constantly wrestling. Um, so, like, they, they can't tap it more than once or twice more tops. But then the other thing is, where do you go from here? You've had a street fight. You've had a last man standing match. You can have a cage. Here's where you go. Here's where you go. NXT TakeOver, War Games, Three Stages of Hell. That would be. Yeah. I think that would be like the perfect blow off. Like just have. You'd have to finish it like that on a big, right? Like, and like it can yeah. end with like the war games cage coming down, and it ends in that ring. And then you can have that mm. ending moment or like a big spot off the cage. But say like Gargano standing on top of the cage, holding the belt up. How good would that feel? While doing the. <laughs> yeah. Chris, Chris's dad coming in again. But, it's just like, for God's sake, son, what are you doing? I would say either an <laughs> Iron, Man, Iron Man match or Three Stages of Hell is how they have to handle it. Yeah. See, I, I, I was Three Stages of Hell, I quite like the sound of. I read something on Reddit the other day where it was a sort of how would you book the, the sort of blow-off match. And someone suggested you have an I Quit match. Oh, yes. And, and just have Gagano absolutely murder Champer after being out for a couple of months. That is a have good like, idea. That is, mm. And then have him like just about to do something like absolutely terrible, like slam his head in between like two chairs, and then just have Gagano go. You know, it's, it's not worth it. I, I quit. Like, yeah, it's just... kind of like that moment yeah. where he was about to do I the run I... knee, and Chapo was like, Wait, please, weirdly, no, please, no. Weirdly, I kind of prefer three stages of hell to I quit, just because I think Champa's kind of a coward heel. So if he gets beat up too much, he would naturally just give in. Like, I mean, I suppose he does. I mean, he can't give in the difference time. between the begging and the giving. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting one. That is an interesting I mean, they've got to have something. Well, they got to have one more match then, I guess, is what we kind of agreed on. Yeah. And it's, but it's got to be big because you need it to be the blow off now because I think it's going to get just played out if you do it too many times. Pick, I feel they, like we should they have... can't end this without Gargano winning the title, can they? Yeah. And it needs to end with him winning. I guess it's going to depend as well on how big this injury is, huh? Like, yeah. in terms of how long he's out for. And that's See, I think the longer he's out for, the better in terms of this feud, because it gives Champ a, the longer Ch- Champ is Champ, basically, the more mm. he can just play him up as this really bad heel, but then have, like, Gagano be like, right, I'm... I'm Okay, to wrestle now and have him like come out after a champion match and just have champion absolutely crap in his pants. They could mm-hmm. see they could do the Alistair Black rematch because I never got to do that. They could do that. Well, they that's could... something I wanted to ask you. What do you guys think about the like where do you think the Alistair Black thing goes from here in general? Like, I've you already heard people. Bye bye, Tommy End. <laughs> I think it's, who would, apart from Alistair Black then, who would Champa face? Because it needs to be someone like extremely likeable. Like Sami Zayn would have been a good idea when Sami, Sami was face in NXT. But yeah. of course you can't bring him down now, else he's injured. Um, That's a good question to be fair. Um, I can't think who's really a singles Like They could have him face Ricochet, but Ricochet, you know, they, they can't yeah, have well, him Ricochet's lose. Ricochet's got another title anyway. Um, yeah. It was a bit after the... the... The pay per view where Pete Dunn sort of cornered Ricochet in a corridor and sort of set up him versus Ricochet for that belt, but I think Champa versus Dunn would be pretty cool. They they could have a Champa versus Cassius Ono match. Cassius Ono is like quite a like guy. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Who they pulled? Because like, there's a lot more talent than what they show you, huh? So like. It might be that it's someone they pulled off for a while because they have nothing for them, and now they bring them back to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, hell, like Matt Riddle's coming in. Like, is he going to come in as a baby or a 
See, a lot of people are spe- oh, not a lot, but I've seen some speculation that people are saying that they think that Matt Riddle, even though he was coming in anyway, so it's not specifically designed for him, but they're thinking that uh, he might be Matt Riddle might be the one they say is the one who beat up Alistair Black. Mm. Um, uh. Because they both have kind of a martial artsy, well, obviously Matt Riddle has some sort of martial artsy background, as from what I understand. I'm not super familiar with Matt Riddle, if I'm honest, but we, uh, Alistair Black definitely does. Um, and they'll link in somewhere there, but I don't know. What about Tommaso Ciampa versus Tyler Bate? That would be cool. Because Tyler Bates, you know, like this gentleman guy, very respectable fighter. And Champ is like the opposite of that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that would work. Could I even work. think it just as like a one off would be pretty cool. Yeah, or I think he'll end up having a match against Danny, sorry, not Danny Birch, Oni Lorcan on the NXT because Oni Lorcan's like a very respected guy of the NXT and he's a good fighter. Mm. Yeah. Be yeah. yeah. interesting because, like, that is the thing. Like, when you have a super. That's the other downside, not well, not downside, but the thing about having like a, a monster monster heel for lack of better terminology um and then that feud that they've lasted forever is you then got to transition to something and where do you go you know speaking of um, monsters lars sullivan is a beautiful man because then they could they could really like play up the coward cowardness of champ if they wanted to and then he has to like, ch- yeah cheat i mean that's to technically sullivan. heel versus heel right but it's no it's, it's too very different sort of just like a massive monster guy, not face, not alien sort of. Well, I know that uh, Triple H apparently super favors Sullivan. Like he really, he's like a project, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah Sullivan that. sort of Triple H's yeah pet project. There's apparently a news story that major NXT roster call ups are due next week. So one thing I think to take away from the end of this match is that Champa is no longer Gano's biggest enemy. Himself is his biggest enemy. It was yes. his anger, his need to hurt Champa that cost him that match. He could have won it with just a clean super kick there at the end, but he wanted to hurt him so much that he lost the match. I think to win mm-hmm. in the end, he has to go back to Johnny Wrestling because he he did say like Johnny Wrestling is no more, didn't he? Yeah. So he needs to go back to that to being that character before, and then I think he'll win the title. So ratings. I would say 9.5 okay. out of 10. No, yeah, 9.5. Yeah, it's got to be up with the ricochet thing, so 9, 9.5, which... Uh, yeah, yeah like Definitely sure. best, one of the best feuds in NXT history. Just going from that yeah, so long... Yeah, when you take the DIY. whole thing in one go, if you just isolate the match on its own, it's still easily a 9.5, nine, nine, just yeah. because they threw everything at the wall at the end of the day. Yeah, and it was a great match. Um, and respected both of them, I can't that, wait yeah. to see in our match what happens. So... That is us finished with TakeOver. I think we all agree TakeOver was a pretty good show. Pretty amazing. I would yeah. give it a solid 5 out of 7. I would I give it a 9 out of 10 overall. Or maybe an 8.5. Yeah. Yeah. So now transitioning to Sunday night or Monday morning for us. WWE. Transition. Transition. There we go. Don't so, just slam. happened to be zimming down the uh, the NXT roster, and you're right. There really isn't. It's not a lot of people yeah. they can use for that singles feud. Like, there's a lot of tag team guys right now. To be fair. Yeah. So we're on to SummerSlam. Uh, had some pretty good matches. Felt kind of like robbed by the ending of it. But so let's just jump into the first match. I say. How about that? First pre-show? Yeah, so pre-show. Uh, first match was Rusev Day versus Andre Cien Almez and Selena Vega. Uh, I got to watch... Was Stop's face when you said that. Well, I didn't say This it. is Stop's, Stop's face. You went, you went uh, it's Rusev Day versus uh, Andre Cien Almez and Selena Vega. Stop went... So, uh, inter- like fucking 11. interesting about the pre-show was I watched it all in VR and I will say I've seen a lot of Almas's butt in this match. He just kept nice. on putting his ass right in front of the camera. I mean, that's a cute butt, to be fair. So yeah, um, oh. it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. Like, it definitely wasn't Almas versus Gargano. Do you know it- what the problem with it is? Is that the match does nothing, like, 
yeah. from a purely business perspective, it does nothing to elevate either person. Like, yeah. There was no stakes at all. I mean, even so like... A completely vegan match, Jim? Uh, it was a completely... Yes, yes, Dom. It was a completely vegan match. We'll go with that. Why not? Here, but it was just. Oh, think about this. Oh, this match was... had more build up than AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Yeah. I don't know. Oh god. It wasn't though, bad. Chris. There was some good wrestling. The finish, though, Chris. I, I think I the finish. If it wasn't a mixed tag match, it would have been better. Oh, it's when she was trying to put her feet on the ropes. She she tried... Oh yeah, and she missed. It, it wasn't. Now this is what I was saying, right? So the Kari Sane thing. To go back to that for a second, to to use it as a highlight. So what she got, she rolled up Baser, or well, didn't roll up, but she pinned her set of shoulders down uh, on Baser, and Baser was struggling to get out of the out of the pin, and she just didn't successfully get out of it by the count of three. Okay, so that is good because the whole time you think, oh, she's gonna get into my garbage, my girl, and she doesn't. The difference here, Lana didn't move, but she hadn't been hit. Yeah. So there was no reason for her to not like if I get roll if I get flipped over backwards and rolled up and I've not been hit in the face or knocked out, I would just go roll. Yeah, it literally and literally was just her running up behind. Like her. she just she just lay down and I was like, No, no, yeah, no <laughs> but... If it hadn't been a mixed tag match, it would have been a good match. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm. Yeah, I put passable, not great. Like it was, it was fine. Like the the guys, especially like I think the the women's bits were mixed. But you know, I don't like mixed tags. To Stobbs' point, uh, I think they're a, they're a difficult match to transition properly. And, yeah. You know, but I just it, that, I'm just so hung up on the finish. Like, and it's not. I chalk it up a little bit because I know like Lana's st- from what I understand Lana is still the best learning. Lana number one. Yeah, but she's also still learning, right? She's not been, like, the heaviest in terms of, like, in-ring action until fairly recently. Yeah. So she's still kind of learning. She's in that, like, like a bit like the... I would liken it to, like, the Trish Stratus when Trish Stratus was learning phase, where you're going to get some sloppy bits occasionally, but, like, they're trying hard, so you give them a, you give them a break. And Zelina, from what I understand, is actually quite a good wrestler, but I think she's probably rusty because she's been a manager for the last however long. Yeah, like a year or so. So so she's probably ring rusty. And it's just... Uh, it's just, just that I'm hung up on the finish. I know I'm hung up on it and I shouldn't be, but I'm just hung up on that finish being so lukewarm. Is it she just me or is it very... It's like uh, far too short to reach the yeah, rope. Yeah, the word too far away. Is it just me it or is it very easy to forget that uh, Andre Cianalmo is also NXT champion? Yes. It, 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 so, it, he's a good example of, uh, and again, I listen to a lot of podcasts, so they highlight a lot on there. He's a good example of a guy who did brilliantly in NXT. He started off questionably in NXT, I hear but them. they, they, but they built him up to like something really good, and like people really got, uh, yeah, you know, like the character worked, and yeah. the the duo of of uh, Zelina as the manager and him as the sort of cocky heel worked, and people were really hated him, and he became the champion and anything and then they moved into the main roster and Vince is like ah put him in a mask and that was it yeah just he's, he's Mexican put him put him in a mask yeah even though like the mask and in NXT just, was like um, this one big thing he did for his entrance and then I don't know I just I, I yeah but, but then it's like Rusev I mean Rusev is still a wasted talent and a lot of people would argue it's because he got over on his own I'm not into the WWE politics I don't know uh, yeah. But it is very accurate. They don't tend to push people that got over on their own. Uh, well, they, they used to back in the day. It, it, it uh, does. But... It sucks that they have to they lose on so Rusev Day. <laughs> Chris, every every, uh, every day is Rusev. You're damn right it is. <laughs> so I forgot. The I like. The see, start. I like Rusev. I think he's a really good talent. When he had those f- fused with Cena, like how many years ago was that? Like two, two three years ago now, probably. Thirty-one. Like so free. he was a good heel. Like when he came out for that WrestleMania in the he tank, was I was like, I was like, he came out in a tank, yeah. guys. Hello, Cena. You know. Yeah, and then he just got watered down and destroyed, and yeah. now he's just 
I don't know. I don't. In some ways, I don't know how Rusev Day got over. Really, I think it's pure luck. But hey, fair play to guys. Probably sure, selling. Yeah. 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 making a fair idea, amount of shirt money, I assume. So yeah. you know, at least he's earning some money. So I forgot to bring it up at the start, but we did make predictions for the pay per view. Uh, I had Andres and Almez. Stob had no one for this match. Stob did make a prediction, and GMG also had no GMG. Yeah. I said Sorry, Stop had Rusev, you had Cien Almas. So that's 1-1-0 one, one, for the start. And I just want to bring it along here because we want to spend a lot of time in the pre-show. The next yeah, matchup yeah, yeah. was the Cruiserweight Championship match between Cedric Alexander and Drew Gulak. I really like Drew Gulak. He's such a hateable guy, but he's so funny as well. Yeah. So in this match, I had Gulak to win. Uh, Stop, you also had Gulak. And I can't see who James had. James, did you make a prediction? I don't that? think I even predicted one. Yeah, so to be we'll just get points you. for that because, of course, Alexandra was the winner and it was actually a fairly decent match. I love the fact that Gulak just kept on going for the roll-up pins and then they had that whole sequence of roll-ups. Like mm. that that move where Cedric, mm. you know, ran into that whole flip thing. Even though it was Gulak who took the bump, Gulak just immediately took it into a roll-up. And it was a good match. I don't really have a lot of notes on it, apart from they both looked really good and it made the Cruiserweight division look pretty good. Yeah, it was, I... it was a good advert for 205 Live. Yeah, which I admit I haven't watched in like two months. See, I, I don't watch 205 Live at all, which is the problem for me with this match, because I was like, it's exciting, I enjoyed it, but there's no stakes, because I just don't have anything invested in the guys. Like, I've got nothing, no... Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know the... Them. Well, I just don't, I don't know the gimmicks. I don't watch them, so I don't like. I kind of understood little bits and bobs from like what you told me and what I can obviously see that Gulak had printed on his fucking trunks. Mm-hmm. Um, but but you know I don't know much about them. But I, I did put down that both guys worked really hard. You can see that, mm-hmm. and that's fair play. And cruiserweight stuff is I like because it's fast paced and I quite enjoy the sort of flips and the skill involved because I yeah. think there's a lot of things that can go wrong if you get it wrong. You know. Um, but I was just like, the only, uh, and the only negative I wrote was just at the end specifically, there was like a roll up moment or a bridge moment, I think it was actually. And uh, with Alexander, where he just he came out of a move and he just he was a little bit too far away, so he just couldn't get a purchase on him. And then it looked a little bit, I was like, ah, oh, damn, that was like, it was so well flowing until that point. I was like, ah, oh, man, that's, that's a shame. Um, and I think. I felt like they tried to kind of rush to the conclusion at the end of the match. Like, someone was like, you've got time, you've got to get off now. And they're like, oh, Jesus Christ. And that's why they missed that move, because they were just like, oh, crap, we've got to get these five five attempted roll-ups in. We've only got, like, two seconds to do it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was good. I, I still enjoyed it. I, yeah, I, I'm, a rating for I just it, I mean, the bridge you watched talk about there. Yeah. It's a shame, because I, I think they flowed so beautifully up until then. Yeah, and then it ended like, right mm. after that, which kind of sucked. But it was a decent match, except for that. And again, like you said, good advert for 205 Live. Uh, so next match on the pre-show. Um, I don't think anyone has really cared about this match, to be honest. Cause, and I quote in James' predictions, no opinion on B-team match, but probably them, I guess. Haha. <laughs> yeah, so that's we, right. We all had B-team in this match, and we all came out yeah. right. So that's two yeah. twos is one. For the record, I find B-team amusing. I just don't see the point in them. <laughs> that's sort of like the... Like I, I like the guys. I think the guys probably work very hard, and they've, uh, Lord knows, they probably they've struggled as like mid card for a while. So it's nice to see them have something yeah. a bit more meaningful. But uh, they're very much a comedy act. So for comic relief, fine. I mean, like the whole way it finished was basically just a giant comic relief moment. Uh, that was so funny. He felt he just like bumbled over him, and it was like, oh, yeah, he bumbled over and rolled him, rolled him over. That's what happened. That's what it was. They had him in one pin, and then he. As you say, Stobby, he, he what, bumbled backwards, hit him, and then it rolled it into like a, a, the, the alternative pin, like the alternative cradle. It was pretty and, cool uh, that the match like started with shot, a shatter machine right off the bat. Yeah, like, Especially because the like, shatter machine is such a brutal move. Yeah. So I'm going to watch it, it now. It was a good match. But, you know. So, that's actually it. He just... Oh! Oh, yeah, now he's here. So uh, Revival has the roll up and then he just gets pushed over by Dallas. Yeah, do you know what I wrote gimmick? down? Do you know what I wrote down? Like B team, funny. Uh, enjoyed the finish because I think it worked for the for the comedy. 
Uh, but I also put the revival might as well just be classed as ruined. Like again, it's another NXT thing where they did a lot with mm. them in NXT, and then they came up to the main roster and they've. And the revival was so good too. Just yeah, been last night destroyed. Uh, well, like yeah, last night this morning, uh, the sort of had a little bit of a rematch on Raw. Best single, oh, yeah. right? single matches. A 1v1 match. Yeah, two single matches. So it was Dash versus Bobo and Kurt Axel versus Wilder. And the uh, Revival went over. So well, it's a confusing one. I'm hoping that Revival do get the titles pretty soon. Because they're good. No, we're great in NXT. They have match of the year. And like the first I will say as well, uh, I don't know whether you intended to mention that for the Miz match or not, but I did enjoy the backstage segment yeah. with B-Team and Miz. <laughs> like, that was just like that. That epitomizes that act for me. It was really funny. I really enjoyed it because it was funny. And Miz as a heel just worked well with them. And it's just like, yeah, that's great. Great chemistry. I enjoyed, it, but it's just a comedy act. I don't know. It's it's fine. They can have the titles for a while. They've earned their just purely for the amount of work they've put in over the years. They can yeah. let them have the titles for a while. Get a bit of extra pay, which probably is what you know probably comes with more because they'll have more shirt sales and things like that. And then. You know, one or two pay per views later, you just drop the titles off. Yeah, <laughs> especially because again, remember Bo Dallas was the NXT champion again. Quite easy yeah. to forget because he was just forgotten about until like the Mister Edge, you know. Is that when he had like sixty different finishes? Like you'd have a different finisher every match. Sure, he uh, he did use the butterfly DDT, but then when he came up and Dean Ambrose came up, they had to change it because they didn't want to both have it. He's also uh, he's also a permanent meme because I love to say the word I believe. Uh-huh. I have a friend called Bo, uh, Chinese oh, friend. So every time I say I'm like Bo, he's got a Bo leave, and I even got him like the Bo leave pendant. So <laughs> that is the end of the pre-show. Uh, it was bad. I got to watch it in VR, which was weird, really weird. So jumping on. It, you have VR. So jumping on to the oh. first <laughs> proper show, opening up the night, we had the. Transition, come on, hurry up. The Intercontinental title match between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. My this, first note this of this match, one. my first note was the gold bit of ugliness. We all kind of commented on his attire. I don't so, think any of us realised it was a Thanos thing. So I said this to James, yeah, the gold boot was meant to be yeah, the tell me I was like, yeah. yeah, I don't think any of us realised that at the yeah. show. No, I didn't make the link. I just thought sense. it was ugly. Stop, I just, to be honest, until Stop Stop told me last night, and Stop was like, "Hey, you know that gold boot?" I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, it's supposed to be Thanos." I was like, "Really?" Like, I still didn't get the link for like five minutes. I was just like, uh, so, okay. "I think it's a whole thing that was like because obviously he was taken through out of the equation, so there was like a fifty-fifty chance of him winning it." Yeah. What's I mean, what? it's a great match, right? Like, we've got. Oh, do we agree on that? Yes. Yeah, it was a good match. The other note I like hear here, it was a... They, they uh, worked their ass off. It was yeah. a Ziggler move on the Rollins, a jumping DDT onto the ring apron. I thought that was awesome. It looked so good. Yeah, it's just how, how wrong that move could go, and it looked so good. I also have noted down here the like the reverse superplex Falcon Arrow into the 1916. Oh, was, was so insane, good. and I thought Ziggler was dead. This was a match where everyone read, well, not everyone, but Rollins drew blood as well. Like, yeah. Uh, I forgot the predictions again. Continuing the theme of people drawing blood. Uh, I think we I we all had Sigler. Yep. Did we really? And, wow. Uh, yeah, we, we, we all predicted that. Oh, that's yeah, right, because we predicted the Ambrose turn, didn't yeah. we? That's right. Um, yeah. We're all wrong yeah. with that. We yeah, had some really good spots. No, that apparently match. he's now part of the bloody shield. Mm, depending how this goes. Uh, so again, some great moves. That uh, the pick up buckle arm I thought was awesome. We talked about this the other night, like the show strength where they picked them up from the ground, and then yeah. instantly with the that buckle bomb. I thought that was really cool, really cool move. And yeah, uh, Seth seems to get away with doing some moves as well, where yeah. I think a lot some people would not get away with doing them in terms of like the buckle bomb. Like the main time I've seen that used before was when Sting got fucked up by it. It also, it also um, injured Finn Balor. This time two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the curb stomp, like for a while, he was. The blackout. That was yeah. taken away for the same. Well, blackout is going to know. Yeah, but that, was, that was taken away for a same. That, that looked brutal on this match. Yeah, like, they were scared of kids doing that. Dog, like, actual, like. Dog's head around. just, like. I mean, like, if you watch it in sort of slow mo, you can actually see Dolph do, I guess, what you're supposed to do, which is he kind of cups his hand 
under him and like takes some of the force of the hit off. Um, or at least I guess he's not hitting the wood anyway. Um, yeah. But uh, okay. but it still looks like it looks brutal. Like it's it's a yeah, brutal way, looking finisher. The way that the way that Ziggler hit the mat is is literally. I just think it was done that quickly. He didn't have time to sort of tilt his head a little bit, and he ate mm. the mat so badly. You can sort of see him try and bring his hand up. Though. I don't know when he put it under there. It's difficult to tell, but he did try. Watch, like, but there's all split seconds in it. You know, like for split seconds, he's like, ah, and then he's maybe he's down before. I don't know. It looked good though. I mean, like visually, I mean. Um, yeah, it did look brutal, and that's what matters really. Also, unless I misremembered it, because I've kind of zinned through it to be honest on my second watch through. Um, and I don't remember seeing like did McIntyre really do much in this match? I don't remember really um, seeing him he, do it. He tried to, and Ambrose was like, "No, you don't." But he didn't actually didn't actually do anything other than just kind of get on the apron regularly, right? Didn't actually hit him or make contact for lack of better term. Yeah, but and that then was obviously you're right. He got double arm DDT by by Andre Dirty Deeds by Andre Ambrose. I'm trying to find that finish again to see it. Yep, watching the replay. And he, yeah, he does bring his hand up, but his face does go like right into the mat. He yeah, yeah, it's like difficult to tell. Difficult to tell whether he got any protection there. He may not have done, but yeah, there's course. also a bit. Oh wait, what match was that? Was that this match or a future one? There's one bit where it might have been an NXT match actually. And somebody hit somebody. It was an NXT. It was the tag match. Sorry, so I'm going back a bit. But somebody does like a, a strong punch. And I swear to God, I saw a tooth come out. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's just this, you see this sort of white thing go flying. I'm like, that's that's a tooth. Like, that's that's yeah. a tooth, tooth gone right there. Um, but no, nah, I, I like the icy time match. I think it was good. Yeah, I um, like the finish. I love the fact that you know Seth is distracted watching what's on the outside, and then you see Dolph getting ready for the super kick. But Rollins is so quick mm-hmm. as Dolph is going for the super kick, he gets his own kick in. I thought mm. that was pretty awesome. You know, very fast paced finish, then straight into the blackout, curb something, whatever you want to call it. One, two, yeah. three. Rollins is the new IC champ, which I did not predict. I thought Ziggler was going to walk away. Well, that's, I mean, some of that was because we were all predicting a Dean turn, right? Yeah. Like, so, so what's interesting to me now is, and this just goes to Raw slightly, I oh, guess. We'll get that later, uh, man. You... We'll get that later. Have we got another way to end? Have we got right, okay. at all? It's like I got transitions, James. I got transitions. We, Let me use my will, transitions. We will move on towards that with the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match with the Bludgeon right. Brothers versus the New Day. Gonna check who we had for this match. Um, uh, what I like is when there's a match that Stubb doesn't. I reckon Stubb doesn't like. I kind of hear him go. <gasps> we all have Bludgeon Brothers. <laughs> at the start of every. Uh, at the start of every. Well, that's not surprising, is it? Yeah, I think we all kind of expected that. Um, Xavier Woods, are you alive? Oh, so I think this was another one that may have been the finish may have been sort of buried on. Um, so when Woods does the dive onto Rowan from the top to the to the actual yeah. floor, he, yeah, that's like a eleven foot. Hits his hips, yeah, like his rib hit um Rowan's hip. Mm. Um, now, granted, Rowan is a big guy and Woods is pretty muscular, like. 11 foot onto something that hard on your ribs is going to suck, um, yeah. which I think is why the... He might have uh, broke a rib or cracked a rib, though, for really sure. Yeah, like, with, yeah. I think like, it was his reaction as well. He sort of, like, wasn't a normal sort of dive for the outside reaction. He genuinely looked in pain and it didn't cut back. Yeah, he did writhe around a lot, huh? Um, uh, my thing with this was I like the New Day. Uh, I, I think they're fun. But did did anyone else think this match was sloppy though? Like Sorry. I feel like they missed a lot of moves. So I really yeah. want to cut out just before we get away from the topic of that move. Uh, Xavier Woods' Twitter handle at the minute is Austin Creed at Getting New Ribs. Ah, nice. Ah. Yeah. So sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, no. I just, it, I just, I felt like there was a lot of moments in the match where it was kind of sloppy. Like this, like uh, the. The one that sticks in my mind, not not even sloppy like that they botched moves, just sloppy as in there was just weird things like Rowan, like there was a bit on the outside of the ring when they're all fighting, and Rowan jumps up on the apron, and he's I guess splashing essentially or cross bodying off the, and it was like 
Yeah, remember just talking slow, about as, this. slow as treacle, and I was like, oh. You said at the time, he just oh. fell off. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He just walks off the edge of the apron. He doesn't even put any run in it. Um, and there's just lots of moments like that in this match where I was just like, eh, it's just a little bit not not polished. But I don't know. It just it was it's a weird one. I don't know. It didn't do much for me this match. If Speaking I'm honest. of not polished, that attempted Uranagi into the backbreaker. Uh, so Big E tried to do Uranagi to the Carper, then on to Xavier Woods' knees. Did not work. Then nope. he used to give out and he kind of slid off, but thankfully it didn't work because that would have just destroyed his knees. Yeah, he, he just sort of slid down his leg, didn't he? Yeah. But again, I really think that would have wrecked his knees if it worked, so thank goodness. Yeah, it would have yeah. blown his knees out. No, I think it it was just a bit of a... Uh, it was a bit of a mere match for me. So what do you think of the like finish? We haven't... So what? What do you think of the finish? I feel the finish was sort of changed. The facial expression sums up my, sums up my feelings about the, at least the match finally, generally. Yeah, they're finally they, using the hammers though. That is true. They are finally using the hammers, which has been something that a lot of people have criticised that they got these giant hammers. Why would they never use the giant I, hammer? I but, think they you know, use it once again or so, but they just like used the handle of it to push them or something. But even that didn't look that impressive. Like yeah. Harper came in with the hammer and like. Oh yeah, it was just a bit of a. It was just a little bit. It was. It wasn't tight for me. It wasn't a tight match. It looked a bit sloppy, and maybe that's because they ended up calling something on the fly. I guess that doesn't help that much. But they didn't bring their a. They didn't bring their a game, or maybe you know their a game just didn't happen. Whatever I don't know. I think B team um, were rather in the B game. I think the real, I think uh... the real question with this match is: <laughs> is where where the WWE go with the new day now? I don't even know what's going on with the SmackDown Tag Division, honestly. Well, where do they go with both of them? Like, who do the Bludgeon Brothers face now? Uh, and where? And you're right, where do you go with the... Well, the New Day... I suppose you could bring the New Day into a proper program with Sanity, maybe. Yeah. But, well, that might... Be, I'm just saying that might be something they do. I don't know if it's exciting, but that might be something they do. Because they've kind of introduce the two teams a little bit but i don't know so, yeah it's a weird one like i suppose the bar do you bring the bar back into it because they're smacked down the now bar, right they came back lost one match and then left again yeah I, 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 bar I, I, versus London brothers bar nah. versus new day i don't know Prefer, professor zaro on his own like the guy is so fun to watch wrestle yeah i, I do think that sanity do need to be the ones to take the titles because realistically they're the only ones that really could the bar could but they don't need the titles. I'm just going to have a quick look at it, the SmackDown roster. So yeah, I'm, doing, I'm looking at SmackDown tag teams. Uh, do, they, uh, do the clones still wrestle? Apparently, they just never Is they actually still actually on the roster? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Apparently I guess, they are I guess the best thing to do at the minute would probably Usos, be... I feel like they should split... Um, Harper and Rono. I know the, the Bludgeon Brothers have only been See, together so much, a little though. bit. They, they just I, get I split up, put together, split up, put together, split up, put together, split up, put together. needs a push on his own. What about... Uh, it doesn't even ex particularly excite me, but what about uh, Gallows and Anderson? They've I not used them a lot. They yeah, could the good bring them into something. Did you hear about the whole Nia Jax thing? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> during SummerSlam, Luke Gallows tweeted... Uh, happy to announce that me and Nijax are dating. And then this morning, right. he tweeted, Sad to announce me and Nijax broke up. Exactly. Wait, what? Exactly. Wow, that was short lived. Jesus. <laughs> they, were, they were like, Yeah, we're, we're dating. And then it was like, No, nah, no, we're not. I mean, to be honest, there's not really any other tag teams on SmackDown. Like, yeah, you've like got Seamus Cesaro, you've got Rusev Day, but you're basically breaking them up um, already. Gallows and Anderson, uh, the Usos, but the Usos have already had big feuds with both these teams anyway. Yeah. There's Team Hell No, but they already had their match and lost. Team Hell No, and then Sanity. I think yeah. San Sanity's going to be in one of them. Sanity's going to face somebody. There could be Team Tesco Crushers, Shinsuke and Randy Orton. Ha. Oh. 
The ball bashes. Uh, the Colognes. The Bludgeon Brothers. Do you, the Colognes still are contracted to the WWE on SmackDown. Yeah, they are currently. I would say it has to be Sanity. That's all I can say. That's how I'm going to end. Yeah, Sanity is the only one that's obvious to me. I mean, the Usos, I guess you could bring them back against the Bludgeon Brothers because they lost their opportunity to go for them last time. <sighs> like, so that's that's a few. And then you Sanity New Day, maybe, just because they happen to be three versus three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not a. Not a re- the tag teams, it's just not really a tag team. Either that, or you just make a new one, I guess, with some of the randoms like Ty Dillinger and R Truth. Or <laughs> I love Ty and I love Truth. But <laughs> I'm just choosing no. random names. I don't, I'm not want to see them as a tag yeah. team, but you know, like, you just find some random people to tag up. But then again, like, if they do the post SummerSlam roster shift, which they've done before, you might get somebody come over from Raw, like, maybe. You bring over uh, Akim and Razor. Yeah, they're being weird. They do have a thing going on with Titus Worldwide, but it's a complete waste at the minute. Um, so. But yeah, yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah, I think we've kind of said all to say on this match. Mm-hmm. Let's so, go to the quickest match of the night. The most disappointing match of the night, the waste of the night. It was Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman for the Money in the Bank contract. All right, immediate question. Did this get changed because KO took a header? Like, do we think KO took a header and on that, um, on that ramp slam? Yes. My notes for this were great start, just how quick it was. Uh, mm. Came in like a wrecking ball was my next note. So it was wrecking balls nice. around the ring, nice. which Kevin Owens does sell great. Like he, he does a backflip when he gets it. Uh, my next note is that fucking choke slam. He he bounced. He bounced on metal. Like I mean, he bounced. He bounced with the back. It's whether his head hit. That's what his I. His head I think definitely did hit it. Like hundred percent. Like his head definitely hit that ramp. Yeah. Uh, this the the super kick that Owens tried to do. His only offense in the match that Braun Strowman just shrugged off. Did the choke slam? Took him in the ring. Running power slam. One, two, three. I predicted Owens to win this match. Yeah. I, I also did that. that yeah. Yeah. I went with the whole Strowman doesn't need the case. I honestly think that they originally had. Uh, Owens to win, not because of this injury. I don't think they changed. It. I think they they might have changed it before the match, because why would they have this uh, stipulation to just do that? Yeah, it's like having a false card I mean, anywhere you, match where think, um, in the ring with no weapons. I mean, aside from whether he's actually legitimately injured now or taking a concussion or whatever, do you think that like the only reason I can justify potentially why they just ran over Owens is that they actually genuinely want to just give it or he's asked for time off. And they've done it, and they did it deliberately, really quickly and really powerfully, so that he can just disappear for a while because he's, whatever, injured or just, you know, I don't know. So, interesting though, uh, Kevin Owens has deleted all of his tweets. Yes. But after SummerSlam, he retweeted a picture of uh, some bear cubs having some fun, saying, if you're having a bad day, here's this, and everything else has been deleted. And his Twitter is just a black picture, a black header, and it says, back to darkness. So maybe he's taking some time away now. Or it's the concussion taking effect. Mm. I mean, like, I can see him definitely taking a time away now if he has taken a knock now. Um, what I'm wondering is whether they, that was already the plan. And I don't know, the stipulation was just a reason to make people think he might win, just because they didn't want to make it obvious that Braun was going to wipe him. Um <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird, yeah, I, yeah. I, hmm. Yeah, very yeah, short match. It was just, it was uh, I like Kevin Owens. I think he's a really good talent, and I, I was kind of gutted really to see it. Just, I know, I know, Braun's like the hot shit for WWE. That's what they want to, they want to push him. But I, I don't like him running through people like that. Especially Owens. Like Owens is great. He was, he's Owens was Owens is the second longest reigning Universal Champion. If you want, <laughs> at one point it was the longest. If you want, like that, the thing is, is if you want Braun to like look powerful, shove him against like I don't know Eve Slater or well, I mean yeah, you could do that, but like just give him Kurt Hawkins, Chad, maybe not Chad Gable because I don't like Chad Gable, but yeah. you know Mike Kanellis, people who like you he expect to lose anyway, like and. But just let instead of just letting him beat them, let him like destroy them. 
And yeah. then you're like, yeah, this guy's a monster because he's just like, oh, we thought he was going to lose anyway. But now he's basically dead. Or it turns out Ellsworth came back. Uh, Ellsworth comes back for like a third successful run. Um, <laughs> what if it's just like, like security sure. just like dragging him into the ring to start the match? He's like, I don't want to. I don't want but, uh, to. It's, it was a throwaway match, really, from that perspective. Yeah. Uh, like it, so, it's just disappointing. Let's move on to the next match. We have the triple threat match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Carmella versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair, which both of you were a bit distracted during for reasons I will not mention. Like Charlotte's boobs. <laughs> Chris, I'll mention it. They're like humongous now. So predictions for this match. Um, Saab had Carmella. I had Becky Lynch. I and had James had Mella, yeah. So none of us got it right. So... <laughs> My We're first, really good at this. <laughs> my first note for this match was Flamingo. Shout out coming out, looking like a Flamingo. Though there was rumours that her attire was referenced to Jim Neidhart. Yes. Like my first note is just Charlotte's boobs. <laughs> like I've legitimately written it down, look! Look, where is it? We see. <laughs> uh, my next note was Pajama Party, because... Carmel was basically oh. wearing pajamas. Oh god, yeah, that's true. Yeah, she was. <sighs> I don't know, but uh, like, <sighs> I don't know. like. Okay, we had this discussion before we decided to record this this podcast or you know do this live. Like, I don't understand the appeal of Charlotte Flair at all. Like, I just don't... I, I know she's riding on her dad's coattails a little bit. I'm not... I'm fully going to understand that. But she's not that good. She's not bad, but she's definitely overrated. And everybody's like, this is the... She's the greatest woman wrestler ever. And I'm like, no. Just... She's not. Yeah. She's just not. I'm sorry. I, like, she can... She can probably get there. Like, I, you know, with plenty of training, she can get good. Well, or better. Ah, oh, just... <laughs> She's just sloppy. Her moves. It's, that's what highlighted this match for me. Was her like her sloppy moves, like that. The kick. Oh, the kick and the the I don't know what you call it a twisted moonsault. The the the, yeah. the top rope move to the outside, where as Stubb pointed out while we were watching it, uh, she missed. She jumps she between like both of them the and just grazes them with her fingertips. And then they're all like, oh, no. I do have it down like, as a note. Everybody. I have it down as a note saying Lynch and Charlotte trailing missed kicks. Because Charlotte missed that big kick on Le- Becky. Lecky. Oh, and then yeah. Becky Lynch went for a jumping drop kick and completely missed Char- Charlotte. And then I also have note, yeah. speaking of kicks, I have note down as the, the night of fuck your super kick. Because Car- I think it was like Carmella hit a super kick on Charlotte and then she just completely she just, no-sold it. She just... Yeah, she hit her, like, straight in there, and she just like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was reference also to Owens hitting the super kick. Oh, yeah, so uh, Mella looked it's... good, I will say. I have a yeah, look Mella I've, is I've money. Yeah, I've done that Mella actually did some really good moves. Like, given that she's quite unquote, famous for not being, like, the wrestler of the three of them. That's the thing, know. we were saying this, if someone had said, like, a, yeah. year, a year ago, like, Enzo and Big Cass wouldn't be in the and Carmel would be like the main, like well, at the time like, champ. Yeah, we yeah. said when she was coming down as champ, huh? Yeah, and um, she she played a yeah. role good as the heel. You know, just tried to brew a feud between Charlotte and Becky Lynch, and it worked because we know what happens at the end of the match. Becky Lynch is now a heel, and Stop has dropped. Yeah, it stops broken everything in his house. Um, do you know what the best thing about that heel turn was for me? And this is just my sick wanting to watch the football burn. The pop? It's the talking when they were hugging it out and it was like... There was the talking. No, they were covering the mouth so they wouldn't wouldn't see it. No, it was... It was... And I know, I I guess this this is always going to happen, but it was... Jim's has farted and Joe is wafting the smell away. Thank you. Thank you. I also love but you, yep. Mrs. Quiz. It uh, was, thank you. It was the, um, <laughs> do you know what it was? It was the, it was the fact that the crowd, like, 
What she started it? beating up Charlotte, and everybody cheered. Like they were like, "Yeah, kick her ass, Sea Bass!" You know, it was just like they really, and they, oh my god, it was great. They yeah. just they went nuts for it. No, Which I is personally the opposite. they're supposed to hate her for that, but people don't want Charlotte to be champion. Yeah, does anyone care that Charlotte's champion? No, well, she shouldn't be champ. She's only champ because her dad's famous. Like, I think it should have been Becky winning the title and Charlotte turning on Becky. Nah. Have I just would have preferred it. I my my gut, which is why I voted Mello, was I wanted, I wanted Charlotte to like so Mello Mello essentially is like brewing the feud, so to speak, and then at some point. <laughs> Becky's got it like set up for the win, um, and Charlotte like kind of lets her go for the win because she's her friend or whatever, or almost as if that. And then, as Becky's about to do the thing, Charlotte basically just like drives her face through the canvas or something, and is then like, "I'm going to get the win." And then Mella kicks out or does a cheap roll up on Charlotte, so Mella still wins, but Charlotte the, the heel turns happen because Charlotte's like. Betrayed Becky. What is Stop doing? Stop's uh, getting ready for his match. <laughs> I, I genuinely couldn't tell whether that was his arse. I thought he turned around and was, just, was like, just like, hey, look at my cute ass, guys. <laughs> so there was something very early on in the match. Um, they tried to do that whole, you know, sudden betrayal where Becky went up and tried to roll up Charlotte, but they did it yeah. so slowly, and I think she missed it first. It was like Charlotte was kind of like standing there for a second while Becky was like trying to pull her down. Uh, it just. It didn't, yeah. I, um, well, at least just, it ended with I'm something very... trying to heal. That's what I say. Yeah, true. And to be fair, like, I mean, you never know. Becky is a good talent, so I'm, I'm sure she'll do all right with it. But yeah. it's, I think most people would. And like, the fact they cheered her beating up Charlotte just says a lot to me. You know? But... Yep. So, speaking of SmackDown Championships, we are moving on to SmackDown's main championship. We have the phenomenal AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe for the right to call themselves AJ's daughter's daddy. <laughs> we all had Joe for this match, oh and technically God. we were right. Yeah, I, I, I had the way peaked for this. Hey, look, there's two Samoan families, right? There's the Roman Reigns Rock family, and then there's Joe. I know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what did you think of AJ getting himself disqualified? I mean, I don't like DQ finishes because I think it's going to pop out. Um, and I, the point was, he was supposed to be pushed over the limit, right? Because yeah. like Joe was like, "I'll be your daddy," which, frankly, is fucking creepy. <laughs> it's just the creepiest thing in the world. But anyway, uh, poor Joe for that line. Uh, but speaking of summer, I don't get it. Um... Like, why would he not have just chair shotted him at the beginning? Because he'd done just as annoying things in the build up to this. SummerSlam a few years ago, Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero for the right to be Dominic's daddy it was an actual match. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that was... I, I remember <laughs> because that's when that's the when that's Nikki, the great Nikki thing where uh, Eddie Guerrero screams in a small child's face. Yeah, he's like, "I'm your daddy!" It's like, yeah. So it was a all right match. Like there was some good points. Like we're. Love it. When AJ like legitimately got thrown head first into the stairs, and got that you know crimson mask. We, yeah, he got a big cut. Yeah, I feel like we should talk about the uh, him nearly killing some old Joe. <laughs> the the botched Styles Clash. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, he went for the Styles Clash. He got one leg over, and then he tripped into it. And some old Joe didn't yeah. have time to move his head. Oh, it just he was so he was near dead. Like we, then, we were talking during it, and like we were talking about it, I'm like, oh, like, oh. Also, I thought like you said. Uh, the, if, there's a, if there's one where like you can just watch it over and over again, it's that it's that Samoa Joe power slam. It's so quick and it looks Oh, so, yeah. So mm-hmm. Just how quick it was, as not it? And boom. It looked great. Do you reckon, like, I, I, just, I was thinking about this, and I, I wonder if, because, I mean, it wasn't a sloppy match, but like, there was bits and bobs in it, and then the finish was just weird because I tend to be like, well, uh, if he was that pissed off, like Joe had said all that stuff when he came out for the match, pretty much. So yeah. why would you not just hit him with a chair then? 
I think like, it was more because he said, he said it directly to his daughter's face. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. The, ten the link was a bit more tense there, but I was just like, I wonder if mentally they built the match up. To, you know, the two wrestlers, I mean, they built the match up to the point in their head because this is the first time. Is it, I think it's the first time they've really had a major match together since they both joined WWE, right? Like, they've been in mixed matches or, like, three or four ways next together. Yeah. I don't think they've had a one-on-one. -on -one. Certainly not for a championship. A, champ a championship? God, I can't speak English. One whole championship. <laughs> one whole uh, championship. overlay a meme hero just find online, which is good timing. If you want to check the stream, you'll see it. I'm on the stream. I'm watching. Oh. That is... If Whenever that's... I walk into an animal shelter and see all the dogs, uh... I'll be your daddy. So whenever I go on Tinder and swipe on all the people, that is me. <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was a weird, like, so I don't like stories where they bring the family into it. I don't mm. see the point, like. It's, it's, yeah, it's not cool. It's even, like, I mean, it's like my point there with the Eddie Guerrero thing from, like, I, mean, I don't know, what's that, 10 years plus ago or whatever. It was, yeah. like, 2003 it's like, or something. It's just, like. The, the stakes of the match are weird because it's like you're basically wrestling for so you can own a small child. What? I don't... Well, this wasn't you know. really. This was just more of a getting in his head. Well, this is more getting in it. Yeah, but, yeah. But then it's like... But then it's like... I don't know. Like I reckon... Maybe I'm wrong, but when he, when he finished the match and he went over to his daughter and his wife, if you listen... I, don't, I tend to think... Maybe I'm wrong, but I tend to think kids aren't very good actors. <laughs> I think his daughter was genuinely like freaked Scared. by the whole thing. Yeah, that, as soon as like, AJ picked her up, he was like, like, "Nope." He was like, "Oh, yeah." She was straight back to mom, and she was like, "And he was like, oh, 'I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry.' I think like this should, I, you know, it's a risk. I don't think it should have done it, but you know, and it just it didn't need it. You could have done the same storyline with just we faced each other around the world. If you really don't want to mention Impact or TNA, you don't have to. You just go, we faced each other around the world. We are." Premier athletes, we've both risen at the top, and Joe's like, but I'm better than you. But the difference is, you came on the main roster straight away. I had to slave my way up NXT. You've been handling things, I haven't. That makes him the heel, you know, Joe the heel. And Joe's just like, I'm better than you, but I had to work so much harder for this to get to this point. So now I'm going to crush you, or worse that effect. I mean, you can phrase it better than I did, but you yeah. know what I mean. And that would have been a much more compelling story for me. And stop just going to sleep. Pretty much. Yeah, we'll need to try and get through these last few quick because it's actually not yeah, long until yeah. SmackDown starts. Yes. Uh, my last comment for that was I do think if they want to do that whole thing, like that I'll be your daddy, when AJ went up to his wife and his daughter, I think the wife and the daughter should have been angry at AJ and like turned him away. Yeah, the ending was weird. Like him leaving up the ramp, just sort of going out a side door with his family was a bit odd. I didn't yeah. like that. I think that I genuinely just think that's because his daughter was upset. I think he probably intended to go back in the ring and that, and then he saw how much his, he'd upset his daughter, and he was like, "Oh shit, let's just get to the back and hmm. to explain to her how, you know, Daddy and Joe are still friends and all the rest of it." Um, because I just, uh, yeah, I don't know, yeah, I, yeah, you know, I think we'll see another match with them. It'll be Hopefully, better next yeah. time. That's right. my, that's my probably hope. no disqualification or something. So in the interest yeah. of time, we're going to move on to the next match. Which is the eight-year build-up match? We have Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. Um, I had Miz to win this, I think. Stop had Bryan Danielson. He wrote, and James huh. had Bryan. Yeah. Did I? Ah, oh, okay. I thought I had Miz. Fair enough. <laughs> You're looking at it. It was a bit of a met match. It was mm. one of the matches I don't think we we needed it. Here's um, a question for you. I have a theory about it. this. Let's see what you two make of this. This is what I wrote down when I watched this because I watched it. Unlike the others, I watched this without you two. I watched this on last night yeah. um, on catch up. I put down, was it too long a build? Because everybody spent the last whatever amount of weeks going, oh, this has been eight years in the or whatever in the making. This is, you know, a decade in the making. These two just hate each other. And then it was just a kind of normal match. Considering yeah. we were given that kind of ritual, these two people hate each other. They can't possibly stand it's each other. Just, it was just a match. For like, the last eight years, they've not been able to be in the same locker room because they hate each other that much or whatever. 
and then it was just like, oh, it's a pretty normal match. It should have been. Uh, but... Sorry, go on. It should have been two years ago, after that talking smack and after that whole initial thing, or yeah. it should have been as soon as Brian well, came back. Like Brian, then, no, I like suppose. I know, but like it should have been like as soon as he came back. Like Brian was itching to get back to get back at the Miz. Not oh, just, yeah, just like yeah, maybe that. Yeah. And they, they well, I do think it does though, and I don't know what you guys make of that thought either. But I think it sets up. I think they're going to do a mixed tag match. Yeah, with Bella and Maurice, of course. With, with uh, Bella and Maurice. They're going to, you know, because they had Maurice there and had Bella there. I mean, Stump Space exactly sums up my feelings about having a mixed tag match. Be- but I think that they're just, they've set it up for that. Maurice got- was the reason Miz won. Yeah. With Bella, yeah but they had the backstage yeah. segment afterwards with Brie going, oh, you know, you've always fought for it. And da, 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 da. I just think they set up a mixed tag match for it. So, they've got. To, let me look at it. They've got to try and get people. Um. They've got to try and get people to watch the the belt, the total divas thing. So I think it's their way of selling it now. That scene has sort of mm-hmm. disappeared mm-hmm. for a bit. Okay, so we're just gonna move on for that again in the interest yeah. of time. Yeah. Uh, next match up, we had, as James predicted, the Demon Vin Balor. Versus Constable uh, Baron Corbin. I did not expect the demon to come out for this very. I did predict that. Match. It showed all of you up. Uh, it was cool. It was the first time I actually liked the uh, augmented reality. The way they had that storm like above the crowd. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, the art again was very cool on Finn. But dude, close your fucking mouth. Yeah, the tongue thing was weird. Like I couldn't figure out why. I, I Initially, like that was a when he call. came in the. When he came in the ring initially, uh, I was like, okay, I get it. He's supposed to be like the evil demon. But then he kept doing it like all the time. And yeah, I was like, the match as well. that's that's weird. I like was, initially I... when you come in and you're trying to threaten, you know, look threatening, fair enough, maybe. But the whole match, a bit odd. Um, I was expecting him to have the tongue out and then Baron punches him when he bites off his tongue. Because he wouldn't close his mouth. I've got a feeling that was a Vince <laughs> call to do, to keep the tongue out. Yeah. But I don't know, this is another squash match though, right? Like, this it, is what's weird about this it, thing. I liked, that was... it. I liked this match. Yeah. Well, they're trying to, I reckon they're building Finn for something, right? Like, yeah. to hand him Corbin like that? Because apparently Vince quite likes Corbin as well. Yeah. So, Corbin, apparently, so, yeah. to, so hand them Corbin like that and give him that quick and easier win over him, really? But, uh, it, I did like the fact that they, you know, they tried to make him scary. The what, what How quick it went. And then yeah, they had them fighting cool. in the smoke. I thought fighting in the smoke was pretty cool. Oh, God. I will say that as well, by the way. The demon thing. Sorry, stop. The demon thing. Can I just... I don't tend to mention commentary much, because I think commentary you can phase in and out on. The commentary was shit when Finn came down the ring. Like, Michael Cole, God bless his little cotton socks. He's been doing the job for a long time. When he's, like... when he When he's commentating on them coming down, and he's like... I can't remember the specific word he used, so I'm going to kind of paraphrase it. But he was sort of like, Finn, it's the demon. The demon has graced us with its presence. Finn yeah. unlocks the demon when he needs to win. And I'm like, don't... Just, what? You don't need to explain the demon. Just let people experience the demon and like let it become a bit of a fantasy thing. That's the fun of it, is that it's a fantasy character. Yeah, you know? exactly. We all know that he's not really possessed by a demon, and he's a nice, a nice little Irishman, you know. And then the had it <laughs> We've all seen the behind-the-scenes segments where he's a genuinely nice guy. They had it we on all last he's... night, where it was like, I was ready for Finn Balor, I wasn't ready for some demon. And so you don't need to... Like, it, they never did that. Like, I, I know it's another NXT comparison, but they never did that in NXT. He was just a demon. Yeah. Nobody ever commented on the fact he was a demon. They just said, it's the demon. And left that, that, that. they actually said the winner of this match, Demon Finn Balor. Oh, no, I, I didn't like that that aspect of it. I, don't, don't have it be another character. Have it be part of his character. That's what I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was alright. I mean, you know, Very it was quick a squash match. match, so it's what it was. <laughs> so moving on to uh, another title match, we had. The hater of balls, Shinsuke Nakamura, defending the United States Championship against Jeff Hardy. I, not a lot to say about the match. I would say. Yeah, it was. It was. I think it. It did exactly what it was gonna. We all thought it was gonna yeah. do. 
Uh, and there was the comedy moment of Jeff coffee and uh, coffee and shit. Shinsuke and Shinsuke coffee and so there. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down that I didn't find it really a gripping match until they did the Swanton Bomb the on, the on the apron. was awesome. And it really didn't get going until that moment. And then you had the really weird Orton moment. Yeah. That made no... I, I mean, what they're doing. Eh. Okay, I've got two cards for the Orton thing. One, you bring him down and then you turn around and go back. That's weird in itself. Like, I don't get it. But, you know, maybe it'll be explained later. Two... What would really confuse me, why is he dressed to wrestle? Yeah. We all know he's not wrestling because he's not on the card. Why don't you just have him come out in like some shorts yes, and a t shirt? Yes, why was he why was he <laughs> who's that? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go with Scruffy. Yeah, I am kinda tired. Um... Why uh why was he wearing like his little pants? Like he took the time to put his little pants on. I don't get it. Like, why? Like, yeah. if I was there and they're like, right, you're not wrestling, I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to bother getting changed then. The... Why would you just get dressed? <laughs> what like, are they James, doing you're not wrestling. Morning. Better put my little pants on. Yeah, but I'm going to put them on anyway because I want to strut around the backstage. Uh, <laughs> sure, have, you, have you not heard the uh, allegations against Orton? That he's, so, yeah, that he likes to be naked. Yeah, he's genuinely I've heard. nuts. Like, he has pooed in people's bags. He, he hates women. But seriously, I've, I've I've heard some of the stuff about him, yeah. But it's just it didn't like I don't get it. Like I don't get that whole yeah. moment. Maybe it'll be explained later and it makes sense. But I just what are they doing? I feel with like Orton? they were just like right. Randy's got some name value. We don't have a match for him because he you know, just came back. So we'll just like make him walk out and then he'll walk off again. How much do you think uh, he got paid to walk out? A hundred million dollars. So what are they doing with One Orton? I, I thought maybe they were going to have him go for the US title, but it seems there's no beef between Nakamura and Orton, so it seems kind of pointless. Yeah. And also he just also, had the US well, title. Well, his, his whole thing at the minute is he keeps saying he wants to destroy the people that the fans love, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is why everyone's like, oh, he's going to... But now, it could be that off? he's going to do... Well, no, kill a gimmick again? I don't know, because Matt has gone upstairs by most accounts, yes. always going upstairs. Uh, but Jeff was doing a lot of delete stuff during the match. Yeah. So originally when he started doing that, because he started doing that like a month ago, and people were like, oh, they're going to do the Brother Nero Broken Hardy thing that they did in TNA for a bit. And they're just like, you know, to finish out their time. Maybe I don't know. It depends, I suppose, what Matt's mm. retirement means to him in terms of how it affects his his feelings on how he's wrestling and that and where, where his physical fitness is because he's been plagued with injuries again this year. The thing with Jeff though, Jeff was like he doesn't like doing the swan ton bomb, he only does it for big matches, then the same night does it oh. on onto the apron. That to... really looked like it hurt. Yeah, Absolutely. it was a it, the match was just, it's another sort of throwaway for me. I mean, I like Nakamura, I think he's an interesting like he's a good wrestler and he's an interesting character, but they don't seem to be doing a lot with him. Yeah, and they just sort of. They, the Orton Hardy thing, I think, is just sitting in the background and they don't know what they're using it badly, or they can't figure out how to quite make that work. I, I don't know. It's a weird one for me. I just that. honestly think they're trying to buy time until they can bring Matt Hardy back, do the whole broken Hardy swing in a Buller Nero. They'll finish up the time in WWE, and then or something. they will fade away and classify themselves as obsolete. So you see what they did there. <laughs> I like it. And that's how we're going to end that segment. And go on to the secondary main event. We have Alexa oh, Bliss. Oh, one final point, actually. Jeff Hardy's eyes freak me the fuck out. Yeah. The, the final final statement. <laughs> so we had Alexa Bliss defending the Raw Women's Championship against Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Oh, um, sorry. I'm just hung up on that now. I don't know if you noticed, but it was quite hilarious because while he was walking down the side of the crowd... And he was had his eyes shut so that it looked like his eyes were open on his eyelids. He was like this because he couldn't see where yeah. he was walking. <laughs> I was just like, "That's great." You can't figure out where he is. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Keep so thinking. Bliss versus Ronda. Um, I think we all knew what was going to happen. Yeah, it was. We all I, knew that I we didn't... were going to give Ronda the title. Yeah, I was going to say we don't really need to talk about it much. We knew what was going to happen. Mm. What what yeah. we knew was going to happen happened. It was. Uh, no, it was just another Braun style match. It was just complete. They, they took advantage of Alexa's of... weird elbow joints where she can like dislocate it. Yeah. They've done that three times now. And was... the first time it was insane because we actually thought she was injured. 
And then Nyla's just like, oh, yeah, we know she can do that without it hurting her. It's like, it's a weird squash match. I don't know what was going on with Rousey's eye makeup. That would just confuse the hell out of me. But oh, I guess so she was going for like a Furiosa style look, maybe. And then I don't her, really know. her run down to the ring. Yeah, it was a, it was a weird one. Uh, did She almost had a boob come out. I don't know if anyone noticed that. No, I wasn't watching uh, for like, that. I mean, I wasn't watching for it. It just nearly happened, Chris, all right? I was yeah. just, you know. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a surprise. But, but, Chris, before we move on, my question to both of you is this. Who beats Ronda Rousey? Shayna Baszler. Stephanie McMahon. Interesting. I, I, I haven't even thought about Nobody that wants to see that, but interesting. But you know that they would do it. With I what mean, happened on yeah, Raw they... last night, they're setting it up. James Ellsworth. <laughs> oh my god. That would be amazing. Santino no, I realised it. I realised it after the match. So I watched it and I was like, wow, that's a squash like Alexis would think. And then I was like, wait a minute. Rousey's like the biggest thing this company's had for a while publicity wise not you know yeah and i was like who do they get to beat her because the what? second someone beats her she's no longer they have like the di- i think the difference is that brock right was a wrestler first then he went away then he came back so people kind of remembered him as a wrestler they didn't remember him as a dominant mma guy yeah rousey is entirely dominant mma nobody thinks of her as a wrestler really mm. So if you beat her, I mean you gotta do that very carefully, or you're gonna immediately like just completely destroy all credibility she's got in the wrestling ring. Um, I do think it's gonna be Stephanie. They'll have her. Like, if you watched Raw last night, you'll see like she had like the Riot Squad and all helping her. So I think. Also, uh, I do want to say as well that uh, Natty Neidhart came down. Yeah, in, um, uh, and uh, in her Stephanie. dad's. Jacket, which was really a really nice touch, I thought, and that. Um, what was slightly, <laughs> I don't know, if it's not really funny, but it was kind of odd, I guess, is that if you listen, it's because they had the mics on when Rowdy and Natty were hugging at the top of the stage. Rowdy kept going to her, "You're so strong, you're being so strong," and I'm thinking, "Don't, don't, you know, bless her, she's probably got a world of emotions. Don't be like trying to make Natty Neidhart cry on the top of the fucking stage, woman." You know. Uh, they did. They <laughs> mentioned on commentary that. Anvil passed away a few weeks ago, was it not? Yeah. A week? Anvil? Uh, I don't know. It was only announced that week, right? No, it, I don't it, know it, it, it was the day of. He died 13th of August. So yeah, it was last week. Yeah, it was... I know it's super recent, yeah. Because yeah. everybody weird. predicted, which is... I don't know whether that's a change of plan, but a lot of predict pundits were predicting that Natty would... Uh, that Ronda, Ronda would not get a title because Natty would betray her. Mm. Because Nat Natty genuinely has trained her, in, you know, IRL, so to speak. You know, she's her behind the scenes trainer. Yeah. Um, and she bounced when they teamed up and they became friends on the screen. Natalia had just come off of a heel run, and everyone was like, "Well, it's weird to see her suddenly transition and be a good person, good good guy, so to speak, for a good girl." Um, and everyone was like, "It's going to be a ruse. Like she was just doing it to like." wait till Ronda, Ronda got some power and then she was going to betray her because she's like this is my ring, I'm from a family of wrestlers and you're you know, the upstart new person who just comes in because you want a jolly kind of storyline and then they were saying that now that the Anvil's dead maybe that'll change because they don't want necessarily yeah. Natalia to be a heel while she's you know, mourning the loss of her dad, which is it, fair. It would have been bad taste to turn her heel like right after literally the week her dad died. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And because no but... one's going to hate her, no one's, like, they were chatting Natty's name on Monday Night Raw, like, they cheered when she came out. Everyone feels bad for her because the Hart family are, like, the biggest family in wrestling. You're not going to yeah. hate it right after that. Mm. Yeah. So, again, I'm just saying that match, we knew it was going to happen. It happened. Mm. Now you're on this champion. Yeah, what surprised. happens next? I just noticed that my, t- my telephlist is Alexa versus Ronad. So, moving on to the main event, we have Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Around Every Few Months Championship. 
Yay, Roman won. Um, I'm so happy. I did predict that Braun Strowman would come out at the start of the match and cash in. He did come out, but then he's like, he's like, I'm not a coward. I'm gonna face you right up, but I'm gonna wait till you finish the match and you're all beat up. Yeah, I'm gonna sit here and there. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of so, uh, a good one. They started the match very quick off with Brock being distracted straight into man punch, man punch, man punch, spear, 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 catch him in the chokehold. Spine buster, spine buster, accidental suicide dive, spear, match over. Yeah. Like, there was no reason to attack Braun. Like, um, he really screwed it, himself. Me and James pointed something out. We were talking yesterday, I think it was. Um, so they cut the audio when Brock, was uh, Brock threw the case because he broke the actual screen. What and they were like, he he's just through that, and he's broke. And it was like, cut to the chair shot, like the sound amplifier, bring up the fact that he broke the screen. They also bleeped him, at least yeah. on the replay I watched, they bleeped him oh, when he... Bad, yeah. yeah, when he... Because he, he definitely swore him, basically. Yeah, he swore just yeah. a lot. Like, do you remember the Royal Rumble match they had? Uh, like, Lesnar fully probably like, punched him in the face and said, slow the fuck down. Oh, that was amazing because he pretty much knocked him clean out. Yeah, and there was a time where uh, Heath Slater was against Brock Lesnar in the ring, not in a match, just at F5, and that was it. And it's actually, I don't give a shit about your kids. Like, he does not worry about swearing. So, bleep that. Um, Again, very quick match. That was, I think it was less than 10 minutes total from when they came out. Uh, I mean, you can you hear minutes. them. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but. You can hear them moving the mic around to try and find cheers. Yeah. Like they were transitioning. I guess they've got obviously a soundboard, I imagine, in the in the truck or whatever. And you could hear them kind of switching between mics to try and find the one that just had had that extra bit of cheering. Uh, so it's important to note, like the only offense got was the only offense that Brock got was against Strowman, which was an F5, and then some hits of a chair and a briefcase. Yeah. And that only well, took what, trying... four spears. I mean, Brock, like, I, it's like I said I said before the, the match even started, I was like, Brock's going to lose because he's going away. So we all know he's going to lose the title somehow. Like, he's not going to keep it because the MMA guys don't think the WWE title has any value because it's fake fighting, whatever. Um, I mean, it is, but it's not. But you know what I mean? It is, but it's not. Um, it is, but it's not. Well, yeah, it's predetermined. I don't like the word fake. But anyway, um... It's, you know, so he's, it's like the commentary thing, they're like, they said, like, wow, can you imagine he could be the first man to walk to hold both an MMA title and a WWE title proudly in the MMA man. ring? And I was like, he's never going to hold both of those up in an MMA ring, not so, in a million years. Something which would have been cool would be for Braun to cash in an MMA fight, but they would never have that happen because one, WWE wouldn't want to happen off their TV, and two, UFC wouldn't want their champion being beat. Uh, in a in scripted thing. Yeah. Yeah. So No, it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. Yeah, we all knew that Lesnar was not walking away champion and we all guessed that Les Reigns was walking away champion. It was just if I'm a bit surprised Strowman I suppose the if champion, there is but... a surprise actually, it's a surprise that Strowman didn't do the full cash in. Yeah. That might be classed as a surprise, I guess, because I did think they would at least even if they beat him, I thought they would just get the case off him, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But um, Speaking of Ron cashing in, night. yep, let's jump over to Monday Night Raw, where <gasps> Roman Reigns had just defeated Ooh. Finn Balor in what was a pretty decent Me match. Jumping. I honestly thought Balor was going to win, how stupid was I? Just beat him, uh, Strowman comes out after the match, kicks him in the face, well, tried to kick him in the face, missed, kicked him in the gut, but Roman still actively got kicked in the face. Uh, went to cash in, handed the briefcase, wrapped it out of the ring, and then see area Indiga. Indigo, Indigo Hotel Lima Shield. Sierra Hotel Indigo Echo Lima Delta Shield. Darner, darner. The only time that music will get a pop. They come out. Uh, did, sorry, did they play the actual theme song? I didn't. Yes. Yep. All oh, right, they and played they, the whole Sierra they Hotel. They bit came out well. in the proper outfits as well. Yes, yeah, so I saw. I saw they were in the outfits. Yeah, I've seen yeah. a clip of it. Like, but... um, I am hoping they actually turn the entire Shield, shield heel with us. Because they did like team up on one of the most over guys, biggest baby, like literally the biggest baby face. 
So it's interesting to see what they do with this because, again, the shield so, will always so get So hang on. I, I know we sort of spoke about this pre podcast, Chris, but my memory's shit. Um, <laughs> did, so Braun has still got the case available or, yes. he, or he cashed it? They said multiple times, like, Stop, you watched it, yeah? That he's not lost it. Okay. It just kept on going like the bell didn't ring, the bell didn't ring, the match never started, the okay. bell didn't ring, and then then. So uh, they still Coleman, got money in the bank case yeah. in Playland. Then Cole gotcha. was like, "Wait, did the match start? No, the match didn't start. The bell didn't ring. No, the bell didn't ring." And they they put that into your head definitely. But the, the, what, what's interesting, and again, it's the cynic in me, and this is the one bit of the. So I've started listening to I listen to the Pro Wrestling Torch podcast religiously as well as some others, but PW Torch especially I listen to as a or uh, Wade Keller podcast as it now is. And he's pretty harsh on Roman Reigns, not as the wrestler, but just of like the way he's being portrayed by the WWE. He doesn't blame yeah. Roman for that. It's, it's, you know, he very much blames the company for it. But uh, his point was valid on this podcast, or so, what well, I've listened to it so far, which is he said, you can see how hard they're trying to force people to like him now, like more than ever. You know, they bring out the entire Shield you know, including Rollins, who's like the most over member of the Shield, I think it's fairly safe to say, to reunite the band properly. Uh, they did something apparently earlier on a segment, which I obviously haven't seen, but it was some segment where they were trying hard to make it, make him look like a fighting champion and stuff, with obviously with Finn as well. Oh yeah, like should um, they call it Finn Balor for a match? You know, and, and try and do it sort of like that, and they're just trying to think... But the problem is they've not taught him like the body language aspects of like trying to be the face. So when he holds the title, he holds it like the sort of arrogant heel hold and like he's running about, like throwing at people's faces, like yelling. Yeah, and uh, like when you win the title as a face, you're meant to be humble, you're meant to be proud. It's just a difficult one. Like I see, I like Roman Reigns. I actually do. I think he's a good wrestler, and he's worked bloody hard to try and get people to to go with him. And he's he's improved his ring work massively because out of all three members of the Shield, he was the least polished. Yeah. When they first came up, so he's worked really hard to improve. But he's just a he's just a heel, and it's interesting because on a different podcast again. A guy was saying that if you ever speak to the Samoan families, they're all like, "Yeah, we're natural heels. Like mm-hmm. our, our our personas are heel. Like we're all just heels. There's no." I you know... think of Nia Jax. And they train them to be heels. Think like... how good the Usos were when they turned heel. Yeah, they train. Well, apparently, this like just a thing they train the kids to do as well. Yeah. They're like, "You're gonna be heels, so here's how to be a heel." My God. You know, Dwayne was a great heel. Oh, yeah, it works. Nice. So it's, well, it'd be interesting to see, I suppose. You know, now they've done it. At least they've. I've. The other thing I kept saying is, at least if you're gonna do it, and you're gonna give him the title, and just whether you want it to be babyface or not, and you're gonna give it to him, at least just give it to him and let him do it, and then see what happens. Throw shit at the wall, see what happens, and then just be ready to check out of it if you decide it's not working. Yeah. Um, which, so at least they've done it, because otherwise we could have had like endless matches with him competing for the title, never winning it because they weren't willing mm-hmm. to pull the trigger on it. So at least we finally just had the trigger pulled, the bullets yeah. in the air, you know. <laughs> so where we've ended up is with Roman Reigns as the Universal Champion leading the Shield now. The thing yep. is, he will get cheered with the Shield because you know the Shield are great, but I am hoping they turn the entire Shield heel. Because yeah, I think we're gonna get heel them shield. as bad guys were pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, were they not? Were they? They were heel when they came heels in. when they came up. They were heel oh. until a night where it was like Kane came out and ordered them to beat up Jerry Lawler, and they're like, "No!" And then they beat up Kane, then they beat up Triple H, then they had like the matches mm. with Evolution, which were great, and they've been faces since until Rollins turned heel, which was. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. It'd be interesting to see them as heels. I just. Yeah, it's, it's a funny one for me. But they're so weird with their, like, heel and face things. Like, look at Braun. I mean, Braun and KO, like, he essentially bullied KO for the last four pay-per-views or something. Braun like, he heel. was a heel. He was basically a heel. Like, he, I mean, how are you not a heel if you're like, oh, yeah, you're hiding in a port potty? I'm going to throw you off the stage. Destroying his car. Like, you know, like, <laughs> Is anybody in there? <laughs> Go away, man. You know, yeah. it's like Stobbin is, is Stobbin is uh, in his 
but probably not so cute now because he's angered Stobbs' nephew breaking his headset. He was a heel, damn it. He broke the headset. Stobbs, like, so fucking angry. But the point is that that is not actions of a baby face. It's actions of a heel. Yeah. You know. So we'll need to see what happens, of course, going on. Like, are they going to... Yeah, yeah. I think they're going to so turn what's, what's the next on the pay-per-view, then? What's the uh, next hell pay-per-view hell. schedule? Hell in... Oh, that's right. They advertised it. They hell might... within a cell. If they turn the shield heel, they might do all the thing where like they put Braun and Roman in the cell and be like, the shield can't help you, but of course the shield are going to get in. Yeah. Look at him. And Hell in a Cell is a weird pay-per-view. Yeah. It's so, one. we'll do another one so of these Hell in a Cell then Survivor Series? When does Evolution fit into that mix? Evolution's Evolution October. Is... Yeah, October. So after Hell in a Cell. So Hell in a Cell is September... Ah, uh, okay, so it's a middle ground pay-per-view. All right, yeah, I like get you. Fair enough. It's, well, that's also the conclusion of the May Young Classic. It's a yeah. network special. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's not it's a like, it's like the Saudi. It's like the Saudi show. Oh, there's also... Well, they, they don't really do one, pay-per-views uh, anymore in the traditional sense, so... do they? Aren't they all just network specials now? <laughs> Here's the thing. So it's going to be Hell in a Cell, September 16th, which is... Stop. We're in London. I won't be. Oh, you're not going? Uh, no, I can't get the time off work. Oh, damn, I thought you were wrong. Sorry, just, just give me the login to 409's <laughs> Twitch. We'll do a podcast to Luke Chris right now. I'll be in London tomorrow. I'll, be <laughs> I'll, I'll um, be flying home that Monday. So there's Hell in Cell. Then there is WWE Super Showdown, October 6th in Australia. Oh, yeah. Then Take Evolution. Take it, Triple H, last time ever, apparently. Yeah, Evolution, October 28th. And then Survivor Series, the 18th of November. So I think, should we... Do you want to lease for showdown? Nah, I think we could probably do take some notes, come back to it. Yeah, do just it. Take a look minute. at them with Survivor Series. Well, could just could... Like, two mini ones for showdown and yeah. evolution. Like not like two hours like this one's been. Well, I mean, like showdown will just be throwaway matches, won't it? Like yeah. this, I mean, there'll be good matches, yeah. good like classic matches and things, but it's not going to be for any stakes really. Yeah, um, the, the only title that changed hands at Saudi Arabia was the. Raw tag team, they were vacant. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Evolution... Evolution yes. might be similar, I guess, but maybe not so much because they're pushing the women's thing, yeah. I guess. Oh, we'll get so, Trish well, Stratus versus Alexa Bliss. Yeah, and we'll, so we'll plan yeah, this more some of the advance. You also so, get the end of the May Young Classic too, or May oh, Young yeah. Invitational. And NXT the final title. matches or final match. And I... So did they spoil... Alexa Bliss is in the title because they did say that every woman's title be on the line, and then they announced that Tr- Trish would be facing Alexa, yes. and they wouldn't give Trish a title yeah. shot. Probably. I, I have getting... to admit I didn't notice that, but probably they did. Yeah. We're already <laughs> getting four title matches: uh, Alexa versus Trish, and the uh, Mae Young Classic. They did. They did an Adam Lee on it. They announced the result before. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we we'll probably should finish this up because in the past two hours we have covered what. Eight or nine hours of wrestling. Yes. Yeah, we did well. Yeah, it's one of the things wrestling you can't talk about for a long time, and we really had to speed through some of those later matches. Well, there's like a billion alternatives to everything anyway. Like you yeah. don't know where they're gonna. The, the, I will say this, like about wrestling in general, which is what fascinates me, which is why I like listening to podcasts about it. Is you never really know where they're going. You can so think, although yeah. people you can predict what Vince wants to do, you can be like, well, Vince really wants Roman Reigns to be champ. He wants him to be a babyface. But one day, and this is the beauty of Vince McMahon and why I fucking love the guy. One day he'll wake up, he'll get his toast, he'll get his marmalade, he'll butter it on the on the toast there. He'll look up at the look up at his paper, and he'll just his wife will walk in. She'll go, the dog shat on the carpet. And he'll go, right, fuck Roman Reigns. He's a heel now. There's, there's no reason for why he's done it. He's and just like just decides to do it. And, and Santino Morello is gonna that. beat him for the championship. Yeah, I love that. I think I was dead, to be honest, but uh... That's why I like uh, that's why yeah. I like wrestling, because it's is a bit like random. Yep. Especially was... like the last minute changes, like Seth Rollins cashing in at WrestleMania was an hour before the match change. Oh, and that was amazing. Yeah. Otherwise it was gonna be Roman Reigns winning the WWE title, it was a good change. It was. Right. So, so, thank you two for joining me. That was a 19th. long podcast, two hours long, with appearances from Mrs. Squibbs. Have to do it because T's not here. Mrs. Squibbs. And Stop's yeah. belly button. Second appearance was to tell me off for not for being too loud. <laughs> oh, stop. Well, sexy. 
My yeah. god, wait, is that trend seven? <laughs> Uh, I'd like to think I'm a little bit more in shape. Have you got a mustache? You can, you can twirl your mustache, mustache mountain. So, next podcast, I will, I'll do the the mustache. Ah, oh, look at that! He did it already. It's this beautiful. And I expect you, James. I can't do anything. Like, I brought my title. I brought my video shirt. He had his bum bag. He had his mask. I mean, I'm just Come on, bold, James. Where That's you? basically all I bring to the table, mate. That's, you know. I could have used this to be thing. fair, there was a guy actually I in my. <laughs> there was a. This is where I there was a guy. Presence. You know, like those local community pages on Facebook. Yes. There was a guy on there who, when I asked for a mask uh, to do the reveal for Twitch, because originally I was going to film our Twitch reveal, uh, like as in like me sitting in darkness and just light it cleverly and that, and I just changed my mind. But when uh, I saw that, a guy did actually offer me a luchador mask. And so I can have it whenever I want. So I could theoretically get a Lucio mask for the next one. Dude, I paid like £250 in props for this. Where are you, James? I'm in another £250. This was 180 <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a Miz. I actually quite like that. That's quite fun. Okay, so thank you for joining me for this talk about wrestling. Oh, look at that. Shall... Like it. <laughs> we shall see you in a month's time for. Hell in a cell. Is this? Yeah. At least do it with the Vince. Hell in a cell. And this is how we're going to say goodbye.